How's it going, everyone? Today, we've got a story of a Minecraft kid who blows up his own house. Standard Minecraft kid behavior, if you ask me. I know you'll enjoy today's story, so sit back, relax, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Leave a like on the video to claim your free nothing. With that being said, let's just jump right into it. So anyways, this happened to the subscriber many, many years ago. And uh, they lived with, or the subscriber had a couple friends. And uh, one of the friends, who we're going to call the Minecraft kid, kind of had the friendship dynamic of uh, Stan and Kyle versus Eric Cartman. If you guys haven't watched South Park, which if you're younger, you probably shouldn't, but it's a very funny show. Basically, Eric Cartman is, uh, one of the, is a friend of Stan and Kyle, but he's a massive jerk. But they just stay being friends with him. So it's the same dynamic with, between the subscriber and the Minecraft kid. The subscriber and like two other kids are friends with the Minecraft kid simply because they've been friends forever. Like they grew up on the same street and their parents would always have them hang out. So therefore, they've just remained friends, even though the Minecraft kid is like a massive jerk. Uh, anyways, I mean, later on in life, the subscriber moves out to a new town and him and the Minecraft kid have like not talked since for literally years. But anyways, that's at, way after the story. Anyways, when this thing all happened, this was over the summer. So over the summer, Minecraft became really popular or at a minimum, it became really popular for, the, for them. And the reason why we're calling this kid the Minecraft kid is he was like slightly better at Minecraft than them, than them, and he would absolutely terrorize them. Like every single day, he would just smoke them. And the Minecraft kid would always be like, oh, well, I'm just so much better than you guys. You guys are so trash. <laughs> Turns out like later on that like the subscriber realized that this kid was using like hacks the entire time because at the time he didn't know like what you could actually do in Minecraft or not, such as flying around in a survival multiplayer game. Just, like, flying around, hitting people from, like, 50 blocks away. The subscriber didn't really realize at that time that he was cheating, but in retrospect, he's like, oh, yeah, the Minecraft kid was just having blatant fly and reach hacks the whole time. Okay, good to know. Anyways, though, so it's been a whole summer of the Minecraft kid flexing on them with his Minecraft abilities. And since they're still, they're friends, right, they're actually, like, best friends at the time, which is, like, looking back, the subscriber can't believe he was best friends with, like, the biggest jerk on planet Earth, but whatever, right? Anyways, though, at some point, the Minecraft kid, sorry, not the Mine. I just got a notification from Minecraft Pocket Edition. How funny. Anyways, at some point, the Minecraft kid decides to invite them over, like, on a, like, Thursday, Friday night, some point for a sleepover. Uh, another important detail is that this is, uh, this is really late June, so this is late June, and they live in a state where fireworks are legal. So there's a lot of states where fireworks, the things you shoot up into the sky on the 4th of July and they explode, um, and they just make loud noises and they're pretty or whatever. So in a lot of states, it's illegal because it's like literally an explosive, but in some states, it is legal. Um, however, that's just an important detail for you guys to tuck away for later, much later. Anyways, though, so yeah... Sure enough, right, the subscriber is, like, going over there with his friends, and I don't know, at this point, he, he's still, like, very close friends with the Minecraft kid, but he does realize the kid is a jerk at the same time. Anyways, he gets over there, like, you know, the Minecraft kid's mom's like, oh, like, so excited for you to be here, like, you know, come on in, come on in, all the other boys are upstairs. So anyways, the Minecraft, or the, sorry, the subscriber goes upstairs, walks into the Minecraft kid's room, they're all on, like, Xbox playing Minecraft together, um, or I think maybe PC, I don't know if you can, whichever one, I, they were playing on one of the two, I'm not sure if you can hack on Xbox, I know you definitely can hack on PC, so I think they might have been playing on PC or something, and they brought, like, their tablets or whatever, I don't know. Um, anyways, though, so they were just, like, casually playing Minecraft or whatever, and the Minecraft kid is like, like, boys, like, I know this is, like, fun right now, but I got a crazy surprise for you guys later tonight, and, you know, the subscriber's like, uh, yeah, like, well, what is it? The Minecraft kid's like, stupid, did you not hear me say surprise? What part of the word surprise did you not understand? Like, do I need to repeat surprise for you? Like, are you just not able to comprehend what surprise means? Like, do I need to bring out the Webster Dictionary and look up surprise for you because you just don't even know what it is? And the subscriber's like, okay, dude, relax. I, I, I didn't really hear you. Like, sure, whatever, cool. Anyways, they go ahead and they play some Minecraft, they do whatever. And eventually, like, the, this was about, like, middle of the day or whatever, and eventually uh, the Minecraft kid's mom's like, all right, boys, like, I'm going off to the grocery store, behave yourselves. <laughs> oh, these will be famous last words for the Minecraft kid's mom. She didn't die, by the way. I'm not, I'm not insinuating that, but uh, you guys will see. Anyways, the Minecraft kid's mom 
gets up to leave. And the Minecraft kid gets out of his seat, like, runs out of his seat, runs over to see, like, when she's about to leave, which is just low-key kind of sus. Yeah, so anyways, the subscriber watches the Minecraft kid is, like, very closely pressing his, like, nose against the window to really watch as his mom gets in the car and drives away, which, like, maybe... Like, I, I don't know. At this point, the Minecraft kid didn't even really... Know, or, sorry, the subscriber didn't even really know how to feel about this because he was kind of like, why is the Minecraft kid, like, so obsessed with seeing his mom leave? Like, is, is he up to something? And turns out he was up to something. So the subscriber was right. Anyways, though, so the subscriber is kind of like, dude, like, what's up? Because, like, the Minecraft kid was very clearly so excited to see his mom leave and so whatever, right? And it was kind of weird. And, the, you know, the Minecraft kid's like, dude, are you ready for the surprise? Mm. And the subscriber's like, yeah, dude, I, I guess. Like, okay. And the Minecraft kid's like, so, you know... That, you know, you know, our family celebrates, celebrates 4th of July pretty, pretty intense, right? Like, we're, we're pretty intense for 4th of July. And, you know, the Minecraft, the subscribers like, yeah, yeah, sure, whatever. And the Minecraft kid's like, oh, and also, um, we, uh, you know, bought a few fireworks ourselves. And the subscriber's like, okay. Minecraft kid then goes on to say, and we happen to store the fireworks for everybody else. And, you know, the Minecraft, or the subscriber's like, oh, I mean, okay. And that's when the Minecraft kid brings him, like, down to the garage, opens up the, the garage, and the subscriber has never seen more fireworks in his life. Like, the subscriber says this is genuinely, like, one of the most insane things he has ever seen. Like, so many fireworks, just so many. And the subscriber's like, oh my god, dude, like, you, you're, you're being legit. Like, there's so many here. Minecraft kid's like, yeah. I thought if you wanted to, we could, like, mess around with a few. Because here's what I'm thinking. They're not going to notice that, like, one or two fireworks disappear, will they? And, uh, okay. Um, remember, these kids were in, like, fourth grade or whatever. If they were, like, a little bit older, they would realize that, yeah, maybe they wouldn't realize, like, that they were missing a firework. Even though, like, probably each, like, person who bought fireworks and who was, like, just st storing them at the Minecraft kid's house probably has some kind of, like, recollection of what they bought, and if they bought, like, four fireworks and they're down one, I mean, that's a pretty big difference. But the more important point is that, yeah, you can't just, like, mess around with a firework or two and not have anyone notice. Like, the whole point of the firework is to be loud and to make a lot... Just, first of all, is to be loud, super bright, super just, like, super eye-catching. You're not gonna secretly set off a firework in the middle of the day in a very densely populated neighborhood. That's just not going to happen. Yeah, so anyways, right, you know, the subscriber at this point, remember, he was in fourth grade when this all happened. He was like, oh, okay, sure, whatever. Like, that actually sounds pretty fun. So the Minecraft kid's like, dude, let's just bring up all the fireworks up to my room. And so the subscriber's like a little bit like, uh, like, are you sure we shouldn't just look at them in the garage and then maybe pick one or two? Which, by the way, they were totally going to get caught if they even set off one, but they weren't even thinking about that. And the Minecraft kid's like, dude, no, it's, like, kind of musty in here. I don't like it. Like, let's bring them up to my room. So, yeah, sure enough, after, like, a 10-minute trip, they bring up all the fireworks up to the Minecraft kid's room. So, also, by the way, you guys might be thinking, well, aren't, aren't you guys, like, worried? Or aren't they worried? Aren't you guys me? I, I, I'm, just, I'm just the person telling the story. But aren't they worried that the Minecraft kid's mom's gonna, like, you know, I don't know, come back or whatever and just, like, burst on in and see the mess in the fireworks? And it'd be a lot easier to explain if they kept them in the garage than if they were to all be in the room. That is totally fair, but the thing is, uh, the Minecraft kid was, like, reassuring them that when his mom goes on, like, trips, like, to go to, like, the grocery store, not only does she take forever in the grocery store, she also goes to, like, 15 other locations. So he's like, guys, you don't need to worry. My mom will not be back for a hot second. Yeah, so anyways, right, sure enough, the Minecraft kid... And the subscriber and, like, the two other friends that are there. I'm not going to give them names, so they don't really need them. They bring up all the fireworks to the Minecraft kid's room. The Minecraft kid's bed is, like, covered in the most fireworks you've ever seen in one location. So now they're all like, oh, like, man, like, which one should we choose? Like, which fireworks should we take outside? And the Minecraft kid's like, you know what? You know what? Why don't we just, you know what? There's so many here. We can probably do more than one. 
And the subscriber's like, dude, I don't know. Like, even taking one is a little risky. If we take more than one, like, that might be too risky. We might get caught. That's when the Minecraft kid responds, like, dude, if we only take one, then only one of us can set it off. And, like, that would obviously just be me. So if you guys want to set one off, I would suggest you take one. So the subscriber's like, mm. He turns to his friends, and his friends kind of give him the look of, like, Bro, I'm trying to set off a firework, man. Like, don't get in between me and my firework ambitions in life. So the subscriber's like, okay, fine. Whatever. I think the subscriber's like the most kind of like a uh, uh, careful one out of all of them. Like the most kind of like, oh, let's just do this the safe way. But even he was kind of cracking like, oh, man, like a firework, bro. Like, that's so sick. Which, by the way, guys, I just want to say... Even if you get your hands on, like, access to a firework, please do not set it off. At a minimum, without, like, parental supervision, that stuff is super dangerous. And there's so many stories of, like, kids or adults or whatever, like, blowing off their hands, blowing off their face. Like, it's bad. It's bad. Like, these are actual explosives. Be super careful. Um, obviously, don't do anything in the story. This is just for entertainment. Okay, you've heard all the disclaimers. You guys are good. You guys are smart, right? Yeah, anyways, though, so yeah, sure enough, the subscriber is like, okay, that's fine, whatever, we can do that, man. So they're all looking at the fireworks on the bed. They're all super excited. And that's when the Minecraft kid is like, all right, man, like, you know what? Let's actually go downstairs and, like, like I'm kind of hungry. Let's go down and get something to eat. So anyways, they leave the room. They leave all the fireworks in the room unattended. Which you might be thinking, okay, well... What's going to happen? Burglar breaks in and, I don't know, sets off all the fire alarms. Like, this is probably not going to happen. However, the Minecraft kid had a nice scented candle going in his room because his room smelled like farts otherwise. <laughs> and, uh, of course, I'd find that super funny. And the scented candle was put on a position that was not super stable. And I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but sometimes... I will put something up, and it'll, it, will be, it will stay there for days, right? But since it wasn't super stable, gravity in the movement of the house naturally slowly, slowly, slowly pushes it and pushes it a little bit until eventually, days later, it falls over. Like, it's always so scary because something will be sitting there for days and then just randomly fall over. And it's like, it's not a ghost. It's just been slowly, slowly, slowly losing its position. Or maybe something else in the house shifted and I didn't even notice. So, I think you guys can see where we're going with this. Anyways, though, the Minecraft kid and his friends, like, they grab something to eat, and they're like, all right, let's actually, like, head outside because it's, like, nice out or whatever. I don't know. So they all walk outside. Yeah. So good news, they're all out of the house. Yeah, but anyways, though, so they're all sitting, like, outside, and for some reason, like, they're all facing towards, like, the bedroom, the Minecraft kid's bedroom. And that's when they see... The window explode. Like, the window shatters and explodes. And you just see this big, like, colorful explosion and loud bang. This was the first of many. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment house down below. Secret word of the day will be house. Uh, I just want to see how many people made this far into the video. If you use Spotify and you don't listen to the podcast, the stories on Spotify, uh, first link in the description and pinned comment, I do believe. And uh, finally... Up until summer, we're having a little bit of a challenge on the channel. It's a binge watch challenge. Basically, comment down below how many videos today or this week that you've watched in a row. Say so you've said, be like, oh, I've I comment down below. For example, I've watched ten videos, or I've watched two three-hour-long compilation videos. You can specify if they're the compilations because those are pretty long. And yeah, I just like it helps out the channel. It's a little cool community building activity and I'll try and heart a bunch of those comments. And with that being said, uh, make sure to leave a like in the video to claim your free nothing and let's get right back to the story. Yeah, anyways though, so they just, they're sitting there and they're just looking at the Minecraft kid's room and then boom, window shatters, explosion, like just loud colors, right? So basically what happened, you know, this is what they think because they weren't in the room. But the Minecraft kid, after, like, please come or whatever, this is jumping very far in the future. But what they do think is that, you know, the scented candle or some kind of candle was, like, there. It was kind of in a unstable position. It fell over. The Some of the fireworks, like, some fireworks are, like, lit by, like, fuse. 
It must have just fallen over in the wrong position. It must have just lit one of the fireworks. One went off, and then as you can only imagine, one going off, it's gonna be a chain reaction. So the Minecraft kid, the subscriber, and the two other friends are sitting there. They're like jaws dropped as they hear just like this chorus, this freaking cacophony of explosions, and they see lights, colors, they see windows all in the house shatter. It was just like the loudest, like, it, it's, it sounds like, I don't know, someone's like it's shooting off a machine gun, but each of the bullets are like atomic bombs, bro. Like, it was crazy. And so, like, it, it just like bits of the house started catching on fire, just explosion after explosion. Because remember, this is not only the Minecraft kids' um, parents' uh, a firework collection. This is also the entire town's firework collection. I don't know why they all kept them at the Minecraft kids' house. That's beyond me, but they did. So yeah, after about like two minutes of just like constant explosion, explosion, explosion. First of all, all the neighbors have like stepped out of their houses and are looking. And uh, by the end of it, like every like window in the house is shattered. A, a third of the house is like on fire. Like, bits of, like, the wood have flown off. The structural integrity that have Probably the inside is completely exploded, right? And at this point, the Minecraft kid is just like... Eh, what? Yeah, so, this is a, uh... This is not great for the Minecraft kid, to say the least. Yeah, so anyways, right, neighbors immediately, like, they see the kids in the backyard. They're like, kids, kids, like, are you okay? And, you know, the subscriber's like, yeah, yeah, we're good. Which is actually, like... A lot of stuff, like, flew out of the house during, like, the cacophony of explosions. Like, they're actually really lucky that none of them got hurt. Anyways, though, so eventually they're like, get out of the backyard, get away from the house, whatever. So some, some of the neighbors already called 911, so you got, like, police department coming, you got the fire department coming. Because there was, like, at least a bit of a fire going on because of all the firework explosion, like, aftermath. And so eventually, the Minecraft kid's parent like, the mom, is, like, driving back. I, I don't know if she got a text, because, like, either one of two things happened. One, she got a text from, like, the neighbor's friends being, like, you need to get back, sent, like, a video of the house, she freaks out. Or, she just is coming back from her groceries, not expecting anything to have gone wrong, and she just comes back to, like, the most insane scene of just her house on fire, everything exploded, the entire neighborhood is just looking at it, yeah, so either way, she comes back, and she's, like, freaking out. And she goes up to, like, one of the officers, whatever, and she's like, oh, what happened? And she's, like, she sees the Minecraft kid. And at first, she's like, oh, my God, you boys are safe. Like, I'm so, I was so worried when I saw whatever. Um, and then she's like, what? And she looks, she looks at the garage. And the garage is fine. She's like, how did this, how did this happen? And the officer's like, well... You know, we done, like, you know, we're putting up the fires, and it kind of looks like there was a big, like, firework explosion coming from, you know, that room on the second floor. Points to the Minecraft kid's room. And the Minecraft kid's mom, that kind of whole look of, like, I'm so glad you boys are safe, that whole kind of look quickly fades away when she thinks the Minecraft kid might have exploded her whole house. Uh... So, yeah... Um, eventually, like, the mom comes over and is like, like, boys, like, did, did, did you do this? And the Minecraft kid's like, eh, no, of course not. Mom, I'm just a victim, just like you. And she, like, is looking at him. She's like, okay, so if I go into the garage, I'm gonna see all the fireworks there, right? And the Minecraft kid's like, well, well there was a burglar who broke in and was like, I'm going to move all the fireworks up to your room, kid, and I'm going to blame you for blowing up the house. And I was like, no, don't do it, no. And the Minecraft kid's mom is looking at him with this, like, both, I, I, I don't know, I can't even describe the look. It's, it's just like, seriously, bro, and also, you're so dead, bro. Like, kind of like a mix of both of those looks. So, yeah. The Minecraft kid's mom did not buy the story that a burglar broke into their house uh, took all the fireworks and was like, I'm going to frame you for putting all the fireworks in your room, kid, and there's nothing you can do. Yeah, that, that didn't happen, guys. By the way, if you couldn't already pick up that that just was false. Anyways, though, so eventually the subscriber, like, and his parents, like, uh, they get called, whatever, they come over. Uh, the, my, the subscriber and his friends don't get in trouble for anything firework related. Uh, obviously, there's a huge issue, like, it is a whole story and a half about, like, the aftermath. 
let's just say that, you know, the Minecraft kid was not really allowed to hang out with them for the rest of the summer as part one of, like, part ten of, like, 10,000 parts to his punishment. Um, and also, like, you know, the subscriber's mom was a lot more kind of, like, questioning if she wanted to let her son hang out with a Minecraft kid who, who basically almost blew up himself and her son, right? So, yeah, uh, from that point on, there were actually, like, very few... There were some fireworks in the town, but they had to be bought afterwards. And there was no massive kind of, like, firework display that they normally had because, yeah, they stored them all in one house. That was never done again after that point. And many, 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 many years have passed. And after the subscriber moved out, he hasn't really seen the Minecraft kit again. Click on one of the videos on the screen right now to support the channel, and peace. How's it going, everyone? Today we have a story time of a teacher who gets caught stealing from another student. And this teacher actually tries to blame it on another student and get them expelled. Thankfully, though, karma catches up to the teacher and the teacher gets exposed in an epic finale. I know you will enjoy this story, so sit back, relax, leave a like in the video to claim your free nothing, and let's jump right into it. So we're going to call the subscriber who submitted this story Aaron. So anyways, right... Aaron was a senior in high school. So it was senior year, and it was about midway through high school when this whole thing went down. And uh, Aaron had a teacher, and we're, well, well, what should we call the teacher? We're going to call her uh, Miss Karma. We're going to call her Miss Karma because karma happens to Miss Karma, and I thought that'd be pretty funny. So anyways, Miss Karma was a pretty normal teacher. She was on the younger side. I think she was in her early 30s, and for teachers, a lot of them are a lot older, right? So she was on the younger side, and uh, this story all happens one day when another student, who we'll just happen to call Ben, walks in the class and is, like, you know, kind of freaking out a little bit. And so everyone's kind of, like, looking at him, kind of confused why he's freaking out, and that's when he exclaims to everyone that, you know, oh, my God, like, my laptop has been stolen, and the thing was, right, basically what happened was uh, Ben left his bag in the room overnight, so in the classroom overnight, and uh, forgot his backpack, so he just thought, okay, well, when I get to school tomorrow, it's fine. So Ben walked into the classroom that day, sat down at the seat that he normally sits at. His bag was there, but when he opens it up, his laptop is not there. And it wasn't like he took out his laptop and left it somewhere else. No, he left his laptop in his bag as he always does. So the fact that the laptop is no longer in the bag means it's likely that it's been stolen. So yeah, sure enough, everyone in the class is, you know, alerted to this as this is pretty serious. This is a fairly big deal. I mean, a laptop is no inexpensive item. If his, like, backpack was stolen and there wasn't a laptop in it or his jacket or something along the lines of that, I don't think there would have been as much seriousness brought to the situation, even though, uh, you know, a jacket and backpack are not like dollar store expenses. You're not going to pay 50 cents for a jacket. Like it's, I understand that those are still pretty important things to deal with. However, I think we can all agree that laptops are much more serious because they can range from like a couple hundred to even a thousand plus dollars. So yeah, right away, this was kind of made a serious event. And the teacher, Miss Karma, was like, all right, well, Ben, uh, how about you go to the front office, uh, file an official report, and hopefully, like, they'll be able to find your, your laptop or whatever. So Ben was pretty freak was freaking out a little bit because it was his home personal laptop. At the school, you could either, you were forced to get a laptop, so they'd give you, like, a school-borrowed one, or if you had your own, you could bring it in. And Ben happened to have his own, which kind of meant that, you know, there was no kind of protection over it. I think the school would be mad if you lost theirs and maybe charge you a little bit, but it was a much bigger deal because this was his home personal one. It had all of his files on it. It was really expensive. And I bet Ben knew that, like, if he went home to his mom and said, hey, mom, I lost my backpack or I, it was st my computer was stolen, right? I bet the mom would have been like, oh, yeah, right, it was stolen. You probably just lost it. I'm not buying you another one. Or even if she really did believe it was stolen, maybe they just couldn't afford one at that time. I mean, laptops are really expensive. I wouldn't blame her. So Ben was freaking out a lot. And, uh, you know, there's kind of a uh, kind of a little bit of a murmur going around the classroom because there's questions of, is this like someone who is kind of like, is this like a chronic thing? Is someone going, is there a serial laptop stealer? Do we need to worry about this? However, no one would have ever suspected that it was the teacher, right? So here's the thing. Uh, there was a bit of a school investigation that went into this. Um, the reason why people knew that, or at least the subscriber Aaron knew that, is because there's an email sent out to all the teachers when they got home that, or then when they got back home that day. 
So anyways, right, uh, there's an email. It basically said something along the lines of, hey, guys, like just or not. Hey, guys. Hey, what's up, guys? No, but they were <laughs> they were like, OK, I like we want to let everyone know that, you know, there's recently been a laptop theft. We don't know if this is a one time occurrence or if this is a kind of a case of multiple laptop thefts. Or basically what we're trying to say is that, you know, kind of be really aware of your laptops. Please don't leave anything out of sight and especially don't leave anything overnight because there's a chance that, you know, it'll be stolen. Once again, we remind you that in your contract or whatever that we told you, whatever you bring on school property is not the responsibility of the school. Kind of stuff along the lines of that, right? So at this point, it kind of seemed like, okay, maybe there's like a serial laptop stealer or whatever. Okay, so let's go to the perspective of Miss Karen. Avi or Karen. K Karma, not Miss Karen, sorry. Obviously, I don't know what her exact POV is because Aaron does not exist in Miss Karma's head, believe it or not. But Aaron, from future details, can make the assumption that at this point, Miss Karma, you know, just spoiler, right? She stole the laptop. And uh, the reason why she stole the laptop is because. She wanted to sell it for money. That will be exposed later on, but wait until then because it's pretty epic. But anyways, right, at this point, I think Miss Karma is starting to realize that, you know, if she doesn't get ahead of this, that there's a chance they'll figure out it's her. Which, in retrospect, I don't personally, from my perspective, from the details I was given, I don't think the school would have ever figured out who it was. I think Miss Karma would have been scot-free unless she did something stupid, which she ends up doing, but whatever, right? So Miss Karma decides that she needs to uh, blame it on someone. So there's a kid in the school, and we're going to call this kid Alex, right? And Alex was not known as being the best kid. Yeah, so anyway, sorry, it just deleted all the audio I just recorded. Anyways, so Alex, um, you know, he was kind of known as having a bit of a history. He was kind of known as being more of a, I don't want to say a troubled kid, but he had been in trouble a lot. At this point, Alex was on really thin ice. And uh, in the last couple months, Alex had been doing better, and, uh, but he had had a really long, extensive history. The reason why Miss Karma knew about this was because basically she was informed by the principal when Alex entered his class. I think the principal was kind of giving every teacher a heads up of this guy's past history, just so they could teach better knowing such, I think. And uh, anyways, uh, Miss Karma had a devious idea. The, th the funny thing is, or the ironic thing is, it was this complex plan to get Alex in trouble as the person who stole it was actually the way that she got in trouble and she got exposed. So what ended up happening was Miss Karma, when she stole Ben's computer, she sold it and she like went on some, I don't know if she used Facebook Marketplace, eBay, or maybe some other third party service. But what happened, right, was she sold this to someone else and she's already got the money. But the thing is, right, this was like the only transaction she's ever made on this account. So what she ended up doing was she went in and, uh, you know, changed the details on this account from her name, Miss Karma, to Alex's information and went through everything. Well, here's the thing. She thought she changed everything, but there was one detail that she forgot to change that would end up screwing her up later. Anyways, though, so sure enough, uh, you know, she changes up all those details. And I know at some schools, the Chromebooks or whatever laptop that they give you if it's issued by the school, you're allowed to take it home and it's basically yours for those four years. At this school, I think they've had like too many instances of kids like, I don't know, dropping their Chromebooks off the fourth floor of their house um, that they're just like, you know what? We keep it for the weekend. You can have it during the weeknights to do homework, but we're keeping it for the weekend. Kind of a weird rule, but I guess it's the school's laptop, so they get to choose what they want to do with it. Basically, that meant that Miss Karma had access to everyone's Chromebook if they had it, like if they left it over the weekend, right? Or because they had to leave it over the weekend. But she only had access to kids who had Chromebooks. However, Alex had one of the Chromebooks. He rented out a computer from the school because he didn't have his own. So what Ms. Karma did one weekend, and these details were all revealed after the fact, right? What she ended up doing was she logged into the accounts because these accounts were really kind of the students' like computers. Like I know a lot of schools, they give out Chromebooks or whatever. They're, it's kind of like kind of yours, like it's your computer, quote unquote, for four years, and then the school takes it back or whatever. Or, but, or you can like buy it at the very end. I don't really know how it works too much, but this school was a little bit different. It was really the school's computer that you are renting out basically. 
So uh, for that reason, Miss Karma just like knew everyone's like passwords or whatever. Because I think like her class was the only one that needed the computer for some kids or whatever. So I don't totally know the details. Either way, she got access into the computer and she went into uh, Alex's account, went into his Google, logged into whatever he was using, right? for this, like, logged into the service that you could sell stuff, probably more locally, right? And she entered in the password to her account. And remember, her account just got all of its information changed to, you know, her name, or from, from her name to Alex's name. So anyways, what she does after this and says, basically on Monday, goes up to the principal and is like, you know what, I was just doing a little bit of routine checking to make sure kids aren't looking at you know, anything too sussy among us in class. Yep, she said that. She said that, not me, guys. She said, now she was like, I don't know, I'm just making sure that kids were using the internet properly, and I happened to stumble upon upon something very disturbing in Alex's search history. So sure enough, she shows it to the uh, the principal, and the principal looks at it, and is like, wait, like this is a... uh, a whatever account, like it's used to buy and sell stuff. And she's like, yeah, and I, you know, maybe I was snooping, maybe I did the wrong thing, but I looked at his history and sure enough, there's a laptop that looks, matches the description of Ben's laptop that was recently sold. So obviously, right, the principal thinks, oh my God, well, here's perfect proof. Uh, Real quick comment, proof down below if you made it this far into the video, that'll be the secret word of the day. And while you're checking out the comment section writing proof, Check out the pinned comment as there are three links, one to the Spotify page, I upload these stories as podcasts, and also links to two other channels that I'm kind of daily posting on now, so subscribe to both of those. Anyways, I totally understand why the principal would have believed that this was, you know, in fact, proof, because no one would have expected a teacher to go out of their way after stealing a kid's laptop to do this crazy, elaborate, like, James Bond evil villain plan, right? It just doesn't make sense. It just, in most cases, guys, the most logical outcome is the true and correct outcome. However, not in all cases. And this just happened to be an outlier case where it's true, not in all cases. So yeah, sure enough, right, uh, the principal's like, okay, this is enough to actually like bring them in. So everyone, let's flap, let's flash back to uh, Aaron's perspective. So Aaron, the subscriber, walks into class on that Monday morning, not expecting anything. He sits down as well as the rest of his classmates. Ben was there, Alex was there, and the one person who wasn't there was Miss Karma. Miss Karma was never late, and if she was, she was late by 30 seconds and would profusely apologize for being late, right? However, she was late by five minutes. So yeah, everyone was just sitting in class and it was really strange that the teacher wasn't there because why would the teacher not be there? The teacher's always there. However, that's when the teacher walks in, six or seven minutes late, completely unheard of. She's not alone though. She's also accompanied by the principal. The principal walks in as well as the teacher and the principal says, you know, kind of like whispers to the teacher because I don't think the principal know. No, 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 that didn't happen. The principal knows Alex on a first name basis. So I think the principal must have like whispered over like, hey, can you take Alex, whatever. So the teacher goes up to Alex and uh, kind of like leans above him and is like, Alex, can we talk to you for a second? And Alex looks very confused because Alex has been through this before, right? He's been through the mud when it comes to getting in trouble. Like bro's been in trouble so many times that he knows the routine. Like he knows all the people at the front office. Like he, he knows them on a first name, personal basis. He probably walks in there is like, hey, Cheryl, how's your son doing, right? How's the little league going for him? He probably knows them at that level basis, right? So at this point, Alex knows that he is in trouble, but he doesn't know why. Cause this is the routine formula for like, I'm in trouble, I do X or Y, this is how it goes. The teacher and the principal comes in, but he also knows that the principal only really comes in with the teacher to pull someone out of class when it's a big deal. So Alex is like, oh shoot. Cause I'm sure in the back of Alex's head, there's a lot of things that he did back in his bad era that have not been discovered yet. And it was probably something that like he thought, oh no, they went back and they figured out it was me, I'm screwed. But Alex also just kind of like, is like, you know what? I'm not going to incriminate myself. I'm smarter than that. I'm probably not going to say anything. So yeah, anyways, Alex is pulled out of class 
and uh, the class is sitting there. That's another thing. Miss Karma goes up with the principal. They sit there for 25 minutes before Miss Karma comes back and is like, guys, I'm so sorry. There's been a pretty important event. Um, can you guys pull out today's reading and just read it quietly? And obviously, the second Miss Karma leaves after that, the whole class is like, yo, what's going on right now? And no one reads it, obviously. Come on now. So obviously people are talking. There's a big like murmur. I don't think people necessarily put it two and two together that Alex was being framed for, you know, taking a Ben stuff. However, people knew that Alex had a little bit of a quote unquote history and uh, people also knew the procedure because the whole like the principal and teacher comes in and whispers to a kid to come with them. That's never a good sign. I mean, I think they're trying to do that to be a little bit more discreet than like going on the loudspeaker and be like, yo, Alex, come to the front office. You're in big trouble. Ha ha ha. Like they're, it's a little bit more discreet, but people just know the signs. Right. And the fact that Miss Karma didn't come back made them feel as if Miss Karma was necessary in the investigation, if that makes sense. Like, if it was just Alex and nothing to do with her or anything like that, they would have been pulled out. Anyways, let's flip back now to the perspective of Alex, who, you know, Aaron actually spoke to Alex after this whole thing went down to get a little bit more detail. So thanks to Alex being, you know, giving with this type of stuff, right, we're able to get a very interesting perspective from how the House of Cards fell, how Miss Karma was actually exposed, and it's actually quite interesting. So anyways, Alex, now we're in Alex's POV, so not the subscriber, but Alex, the kid who is being framed. From his perspective, he's walking up, and the principal and Miss Karma are all walking up to the uh, front office. Alex in his head is like, what? What did I do now? Like, I, I don't even know. Like, every other time, Alex, when he was caught, he was like, ah, oh, crap. Like, he knew what he did, bro. He was like, all right, fine, you got me. Fair, fair enough. I was an idiot, I know. But this time, Alex genuinely was just really confused. So Alex is walking up to the front office, and they get there, and they sit down. And the principal and Miss Karma are both sitting on the same side of the desk. The principal is like, Alex, we want to speak to you about Ben's missing computer. And Alex is, immediately realizes, this is not about the thing he was thinking of that he did like six months ago that he had not been caught for yet. So he's like, okay, it's not that, phew. And then he starts to realize, missing computer? Like, I have nothing to do with that. So he says, like, oh, yeah, like, Ben came into class and says computer was stolen. Uh, I have nothing to do with that. I don't know anything. So that's when Miss Karma was like, well, we, we, we disagree. And Ben was like, we're not sorry, not Ben. Um, Alex was like, what? What do you mean you disagree? Like, that's not like a I agree or disagree type statement. And that's when the principal takes Alex's Chromebook and flips it around. And sure enough, there is a tab open that is logged into some site, Facebook Marketplace, eBay, or maybe some third-party site. There's a billion to buy and sell stuff, right? Sure enough, it's logged into an account that says Alex's name, and there's one purchase on it, and there's one sell on it, and yeah, and it is very clearly the laptop that was missing. So Alex immediately is starts to, like, his heart starts racing because he's like, this isn't mine, I do, like, this is my computer, but this isn't mine. So uh, immediately Alex is like, this is not my account. Like, I, I know it doesn't look like that, but this seriously isn't mine. So the principal's like, look, bro. I don't know if he says bro, but he's like, look, Alex, Alex, this is your computer. This is a recent search. And we log in and you're logged into this account that has your name on it. And there's one transaction and it happens to be the computer that was stolen a couple days ago. You need to understand my perspective on this and how I cannot believe you if you just say it's not me. So Alex realizes this. He knows it's not him. It looks fishy and suspicious, but he just can't realize, right? He can't, like, he, he just under, he, he's just like, this is so good. Like, whoever did this to me, and he's like half thinking that he must have been in some sleep trance or whatever doing this, or half he was going insane. But also, if he was being set up, that someone had done a perfect job. Well, here's the thing. It was a near perfect job because there was a slight error. I don't know what site this was used. I actually don't think this was eBay or Facebook Marketplace because there was some section on the account that had a recent, revi like a recent revision history, like a recent changes tab, almost like in Google Docs, how you can see your recent changes. 
because Alex was going around just trying to figure out if there was something wrong. Because he's like, this is not my account. Like, what is this? So he goes through, the name says Alex, and it's like, there's an order, and it's all this, all the information looks like him, right? There's not a lot of slots for information, but that's when he went into like revision history for like information or something. I don't really know what site has this, but like, yeah. So that's when Alex is like, wait a minute. And the principal's like, what? He's like, uh, and he clicks into revision history. And Miss Karma is watching the whole thing. And Alex was not looking at Miss Karma's face because he was focused on rev- looking frantically for some type of proof to show that it wasn't him. But he can only imagine the look on Miss Karma's face, right? Basically the look of, I'm about to get exposed. And when he opens up revision history, it shows the original account name. The original account name was Miss Frickin' Karma, baby. It was her the whole time. So yeah, sure enough, he shows this to the principal. The principal is like, uh, and he kind of looks at it and he like is, is in complete disbelief because he sees what's in the revision history and he looks at Miss Karma and Miss Karma refuses to make eye contact with him. Yeah, so shortly after Alex was dismissed, he didn't have to be there anymore. And a couple days later, Miss Karma was no longer their teacher, and they got a new teacher. Alex and the subscriber Aaron spoke about this afterwards, and they shared both their perspectives. And that's how we, how we got today's complete story. Do me a favor, and if you're not doing anything, click on the video on screen right now. It'll help me out a lot. Bye. How's it going, everyone? Today we got a story time of a Gen Z kid who ruins his life over a TikTok video. Sometimes people in Gen Z, and I know that's my generation, and I know that's some of your generation, they just want to become famous so incredibly bad that they will risk literally everything just to obtain fame. It's it's a tough sight, and you do hate to see it. But this is a pretty crazy story, and I know you'll enjoy it. So sit back, relax, subscribe if you're new, leave a like on the video to claim your free nothing, and let's jump right into it. So we're going to call the subscriber who submitted this story Ben. So anyways, right... There's a kid in Ben's class who we're going to call the Gen Z kid. And every single time I get people in my comment section being like, oh, just because someone's in a generation doesn't mean blah, blah, blah. Guys, I know. I know, guys, I know. When I say Gen Z kid, I simply mean someone who spends their entire day canceling people on Twitter. For example, Mr. Beast being nice, nah, canceled, right? Or someone who spends 25 hours a day on TikTok and someone who gets all of their information, opinions, news, life advice, like literal, like spends every second of their day and consumes all their information from TikTok. Those are Gen Z kids. And also Gen Z kids uh, tend to really want like fame at any cost. Like they just see clout and they're just like, oh yeah, baby, let's get some of that. So today is a story of when the, the strive, the wanting of clout destroyed this Gen Z kid's life. So anyways, there's a kid in Ben's class, as I said, who we're going to call the Gen Z kid. And this kid had been desperately trying to blow up on TikTok for the longest time. Speaking of TikTok, you should follow my TikTok at Connor Pugs. I got like 11K on there. Help me get to 20K. I don't know. Anyways, though, so this kid had been posting like five times a day, literally everything. He would do the TikTok uh, I don't know, trend, dances, whatever. He would do, like, bottle flip challenge. Bro, bro, 2017 is calling. Like, it wants its trend back. That's all I'm trying to say. But yeah, this kid would literally be doing anything to try and become famous online. There is nothing inherently wrong with this, by the way. Like, I was grinding on YouTube for the longest time. Like, I probably made 500 videos before I even got, like, 20,000 subs. So, like, nothing wrong with it at all. Like, that's totally fine. However, this kid was, like, super obnoxious about it, too. Bro would, like, do quote-unquote prank videos where he would just be really annoying. Like, you know, like, back in the day, I don't know if you guys were around for, like, the YouTube 2015-2016, like, prank era where people would just be menaces to society and it's like, it's just a prank, bro. It's like, nah, dude, it's not just a prank. At this point, it's mad serious. Like, dudes would actually go out and, like, do really bad stuff. And then when the other person would understandably start to retaliate because, I don't know, something bad just happened, guy with the camera would come out and be like, dude, it's just a prank. Don't get mad at us. It's like, no, dude, you, you, you still did it. It doesn't matter if it's a prank or not. And then, like, it kind of became a meme, like, it's just a prank is, like, a cop-out. Anyways, though, so this kid had been grinding for the longest time trying to become successful. Yeah, so anyways, though, 
Uh, sometimes people on the internet will, instead of taking the long route of making content that maybe doesn't get a lot of views, but being like, I know someone will like this and just sticking with it and just making improvements and really just learning their craft over time. Some people will go out and do really viral stunts that are just not really good. Example is like back in the day when people would like lick ice cream and put it back in the store, which is very illegal for many reasons. And they go viral for that reason. First of all, that fame is super fleeting, but also second of all, dude, stupid. You just, you just film yourself committing a crime on camera, bro. Like that's ridiculous. Anyways though, so one day, you know, the subscriber was, the subscriber Ben was sitting at lunch and the Gen Z kid who everyone kind of didn't like because of how kind of like cringe and annoying he would be. Doesn't mean he's necessarily a bad person, but he'd be like, he like, I don't know, like throw a banana at someone and be like, dude, you just got pranked, bro. You just got pranked. And everyone be like, oh my God, this kid again. Yeah, but anyways, right. Sure enough, this kid came up to Ben and he sat down next to Ben and Ben's like, what's up, man? And this guy's like, dude, I know I say this all the time, but you're not going to believe the TikTok I just made. And so Ben is like, okay, and pulls up the page. And sure enough, he pulls up the Gen Z kid's TikTok. And the Gen Z kid was not kidding. Ben could not believe the TikTok he just made, but not because it was, oh my God, this is so creative, so funny. No, it was just really bad. Yeah, so you guys might be really curious about what the TikTok is. So basically, right, and once again, I have to do the little disclaimer. I hope it's obvious to you guys, but by telling you these stories, I'm not encouraging you to do these things. In fact, normally, when I tell these stories, they're from the perspective of us collectively clowning on the person doing these things. So I would personally hope that you would not go ahead and try and emulate this stuff, but whatever. Sure, just had to get that disclaimer out of the way. So the TikTok video was of the Gen Z kid Hidden in the girl's locker room. Yeah, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm gonna let that sink in for a second. Dude was recording himself in the girl's locker room. Now, I, okay, you guys might be thinking, well, Connor, well, Connor, relax. Like, who cares? Like, no one's in there. No, 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 no. This was like mid-gym session, or not mid-gym session, but this was like, they were in there too, if you're catching my drift, right? So immediately Ben's like, dude, First of all, he's like, dude. And he's like, dude, like, you actually need to take this down. Like, this is not good. And the Gen Z kid was like, bro, I normally get five views in 30 minutes. I'm already up to 100 views in 30 minutes. Bro, this is going to be my ticket to TikTok fame. And Ben's like, no, this is going to be a ticket to getting suspended and expelled, bro. And let me just say that Gen Z kid probably should have listened to Ben here. Probably should have listened to Ben, but... Hey man, you guys are just gonna see how this story unfolds. Yeah, so sure enough, right, the subscriber is just looking at the Gen Z kid and is like, man, I don't think you understand. Like, you know you can't be in the girls' bathroom, like locker room and obviously like recording yourself and like, okay, so he wasn't like full on recording them. However, like they were kind of in sight. Like he was very clearly hiding in like, you know, one of the lockers or whatever. And like you could see, because you know in the lockers how there's like grates or whatever and you can look through, you could basically get a view through the grates. And I don't know if there's anything like really, really bad that you could see through these grates. Like I wasn't told. By the way, these stories are all submitted by you guys. And if you have a story that you want to submit to me, you, you can do so by going to my Instagram, which is Connor Pugs, following me on there and then sending me a DM message. Just message me on there. Tell me the whole story and that's where I collect them. Anyways, though, the subscriber who submitted this on Instagram wasn't totally sure. He didn't get a close look at the video because he's not trying to be peeping, right? But all he knows is this is not good. And you guys might be thinking, well, doesn't this like very clearly break community guidelines? Yes, TikTok in theory should take this down. But you guys got to realize that there's so much content being uploaded to TikTok every single day that, you know, the AI and like the algorithms that will automatically detect stuff is pretty good. So you can't be uploading like, I don't even want to say it, right? This is a family friendly PG clean ABC one, two, three balloons kid family channel, right? Um, but uh, what I'm trying to say is like, you can't be super blatant, but if there's something like this where it's like kind of questionable, sometimes the algorithm won't even pick it up and stuff can slip through the cracks like this. Yeah, so sure enough, right, uh, word spread really, really quickly. Um, not even word spread, but views started to pile up on these things. Because the thing is, 
a lot of times when something sus like this happens on TikTok, it'll actually go really viral because I don't, I don't know how else to say, explain it besides probably a lot of like the guys were like taking an extra look at this like video. They were giving it a lot of watch time. They were given crazy session duration and engagement to this video, which normally the algorithm's like, oh, this must be a really funny or creative post, not a, uh-oh, SpaghettiO, let's get this off our platform type post. So at this point, right, the Gen Z kid was being told by Ben, you need to take this down. You're probably already screwed, bro. But if you want to minimize the damage or the risk of you getting screwed, you need to take this down right now. But you need to understand the mindset of the Gen Z kid. The Gen Z kid, this is his first opportunity, his first taste of potentially, right, potentially getting, you know, the clout he believes that he deserves, so of course the Gen Z kid's not going to be like, oh yeah, let me go and uh, let me go and take this down. I'm finally blown up. He's blown up for the wrong reasons though. But this video, in the bout of a span of an hour, racked up ten thousand views on TikTok. Which look, you can kind of like post a random video and get ten thousand views on TikTok. Like uh, I'm not going to lie, like TikTok views are definitely not as impressive. However, ten thousand views is ten thousand views, and especially for this kid who would like. Basically throw a party if he got 100 views on a TikTok, which, like, I'm not view shaming anyone, but in the grand scheme of things, like, let's be real here. So, yeah, this kid was not about to take down this video. So Ben obviously tried to distance himself. He's like, all right, man, well, you choose to do what you want to do. But Ben saw as just other, like, random guys at the school started, like, going up to, like, the Gen Z kid. The Gen Z kid didn't even really need to, like, self-promote the fact that he snuck into the girl's locker room and hid in the lockers. He didn't even really need to like heavily self-promote that. He just needed to kind of exist for a little bit. He just needed the video to go up and like get the natural traction it was gonna get in the first place. And like guys were coming up like, dude, I saw the video. Like you're crazy for that, bro. Like you're so crazy. Like you're ridiculous for that, man. Like, dude, like that's so valid of you. When they were really just like, yeah, you're crazy for that equals Ha ha ha, lol. You're screwed, partner. Kind of like, you're kind of messing up here, bud. But anyways, right, so word started to spread really quickly because, like, the video was naturally being sent to, the, like, the home pages of people who went to the school because some people who went to the school already followed the TikTok kid. Oh, sorry, the, the Gen Z kid. So that, like, that video would Im immediately appear on their For You page. And then since people, like, followed each other, you know, a lot of algorithms kind of have like profiles of people and they will recommend videos that people of similar profiles will be interested in. That's why like, if you guys watch Am I the Jerk or Tag Swag, you might've been recommended my video and vice versa because they're like, oh, people like story videos. Let me recommend another channel that a lot of people like story videos also watch. This is also true for if you're friends with people more on social media sites, less like YouTube, which is more just pure content, but on social media sites, it's kind of like if your friend follows and engages with a page or a photo or whatever, you are more likely to see it. So basically the whole school got this video shot onto their For You page within the matter of like an hour and a half. And that's when a big group, and Ben was walking by as like the Gen Z kid was basically basking in the glory of his crime, right? Which is like what I find so funny is like when these social media guys who commit crimes and go on, they go on TV. I'm like, yo, relax, bro. You're basking in the glory of your crime. Anyways, though, so as he was kind of basking in the glory as some guys were coming up to him like, dude, that was so savage of you, <laughs> right? A big group of angry looking girls walks up to the Gen Z kid. And the Gen Z kid, when he sees this, his little smile on his face, his little like, I'm famous, I'm crazy, I'm cool smirk, completely gets wiped away. If you made it this far into the video, comment TikTok down below. Um, that'll be the secret word of the day. I'll try and hard as many comments as I can to say TikTok down below. And also, uh, if you want to submit a story, make sure to go to my Instagram at Connor Pugs and follow me, then DM me there. If you use Spotify, these stories are on Spotify as well. And finally, while we're on the, you know, the topic of TikTok, 
I'm trying to post my shorts on there as well. If you want to follow me on TikTok, at Connor Pugs, if you just happen to use it. If you don't, I actually got some respect for you. I am only have a downloaded because I'm trying to post on there. But if you do happen to use it, if you want to give me a follow on there, try and boost me to some new people, that would be pretty sweet. Anyways, let's get back to it and see what happens next. Yeah, so anyways, right, the Gen Z kid gets in front confronted, and Ben, the subscriber... Like, he wasn't there there, but he was passing by, so he was able to get basically the TLDR of what happened, right? The it, What happened is they were all, like, freaking out at the Gen Z kid, basically saying how creepy and weird it was that he was in there in the first place, but then how it was a total, like, breach of their privacy for him to go in and, like, start recording stuff. Both soup, two super valid statements, guys. Please do not do any of that nonsense. I hope we are all collectively clowning on the Gen Z kid for wanting clout that badly. Anyways, though, so yeah, sure enough, the uh, the subscriber Ben kind of just like walks along. He's like, I'm not trying to be associated. I'm not trying to be a part of this. And here's where things escalate even further. So parents are starting to learn about this video, right? Because, like, I don't know, some, like, daughter who got caught in the recording, bad situation, right, must have forwarded to their parents being, like, look at this kid in my class, like, deal with this. And the parents probably spread around the existence of the video, not trying to look at the video, right, it's privacy, whatever. And, uh, yeah, a, a bunch of them started contacting the school. School's getting, like, their phones are blowing up, whatever. So pretty shortly after, a teacher pulls the Gen Z kid aside. He goes immediately to the principal's office. It's a huge meeting, a huge whatever. So Ben tells me that the video was down shortly after. He does not know if the video got taken down for community guidelines or the video was taken down by the Gen Z kid as he was instructed. Either way, right, it's like, which one came first? Like, the Gen Z kid was going to be forced to take down the video by the staff, like, one way or another. Yeah, I just don't know if it got taken down for guy lighting, gu violating guidelines before that. Anyways, though, so, yeah, there was kind of, like, a long debriefing or whatever because it was, like, like parents were mad about this, and understandably so. And also, you got to realize that the Gen Z kid broke, like, so many rules doing this. Because not only did he, like, break into the girl's, like, locker room, which is pretty messed up alone, but he also recorded it and posted it online. So because of that, like, just, like, that string of just real, a bunch of bad offenses one after another, the Gen Z kid was not suspended. He was flat out expelled from the school. And that completely turned his life around because the Gen Z kid had made all of his friends, even if they weren't that close, but he had still made all of his friends at the school. They needed to find a new school, a new school district. It was bad. It was a bad situation. And to this day, like, the, the subscriber Ben genuinely doesn't even know what happened to the Gen Z kid. He doesn't know where he's at. He does not know what he's up to. He just does not know what the Gen Z kid is doing right now. Who knows? Genuinely. So moral of the story is just don't, don't, be, don't be a jerk and do stupid stuff for TikTok clout. For the love of God, please, guys. How's it going, everyone? Today we got a story, Tom, of a spoiled kid who gets fired by his own dad. Even though this kid was hired to the job by pure nepotism because his dad literally runs the place he was working at, the spoiled kid was so terrible at his job and just didn't care that it got to the point where his own dad fired him. It's a pretty satisfying story that I know you'll enjoy, so sit back, relax, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and let's get right into it. So we're going to call the subscriber who submitted today's story Ryan. So anyways, right... This was all happening Ryan's freshman year in high school. So, well, I should say the summer after his freshman year. So the summer before his sophomore year in high school. And so uh, Ryan's parents were, you know, before the summer came around, suggesting that, you know, he get a job because Ryan was kind of entering that part of life where there was a lot more things that he wanted. He wanted a bit more freedom. And Ryan's parents, you know, they were fine paying for like necessities, but they weren't all trying to be like, you know, here's all the money you want. Uh, go do whatever you want. Because Ryan's parents had seen enough examples of parenting. Basically, they probably watched the Connor Pugs channel and all the spoiled kid videos. So they probably saw what happens when you just give unlimited access to resources, right? So they kind of said, hey, man, like if you want to like do more stuff, if you want to eventually, you know, I don't know, 
uh, you know, buy whatever you want, take your friends out to dinner, just the freedom, you're going to have to work a job to get some money so you can have that freedom. So Ryan wasn't totally apprehensive to that idea as, you know, he kind of got bored over the summer, like he'd always want to do cool stuff with his friends. But at the same time, like there was only so much he could do. And he spent a lot of the days kind of just chilling around, not doing that much. So Ryan immediately looked around to see what jobs were available. And uh, after a bit of uh, searching on Facebook, Ryan's mom came back with a really good idea. How about Ryan work at the local ice cream shop that everyone in, in town went to and loved? It was a place that Ryan used to go to a lot as a kid. Uh, he had a lot of fond memories there, and apparently they were posting a listing for a summer job for preferably some kid who lived in the area. So immediately Ryan applied, and since they kind of knew him there, he got the job. So let's skip ahead to summertime, and uh, the first day, you know, Ryan is walking down to the ice cream shop. Ice cream shop's like a 15-minute walk away from Ryan. It's kind of like in towards like kind of like a city part of the neighborhood if that makes sense they're, they don't live in a city but there's kind of like more of a uh there's like kind of like a downtown area so ryan is like about 15 minutes away and that's good for his mom so she doesn't have to drive him in every day and have to work around her schedule and his schedule so ryan walks down and on the first day it's kind of like the first day of training they went down on a sunday even though Normally the store is closed on a Sunday, but for that one Sunday, they were instructed to come so they could have a little bit of training. So when Ryan got there, he didn't actually know who the other people would be. He kind of knew that he would know most of them to an extent because it was, wasn't like the largest neighborhood and Ryan was at least aware of most people who lived there. So to Ryan's surprise, there was only one other uh, person working there over the summer. And, uh, well, it wasn't that surprising because it is the Spoil Kid. Who is the Spoil Kid? The Spoil Kid is the son of the guy who owns the ice cream shop. And uh, I wonder how he got that job. Wink, wink, right? I mean, I think anyone who applied probably would have gotten the job as long as they were a kid in the neighborhood, showed some interest. But all I'm saying is the Spoil Kid, as you will see throughout the course of the story, it, it kind of very much takes the fact that his dad owns the shop as kind of uh, takes it really for granted and really kind of like that kind of warps his perception of this is a job and this is not him hanging out in his dad's business. Big difference. Now, another important detail is that the spoiled kid actually like their parents were, were pretty well off um, and not just because they owned one ice cream shop. You don't know restaurant margins are pretty thin. If like someone owns a restaurant, don't immediately assume that they're loaded. In fact, they're probably, they might be going paycheck to paycheck, man. Restaurants are really hard to make good margins in. However, uh, this was a little bit of a different situation as the spoiled kid's dad who owned the ice cream shop also owned like half the other stores in the town. It had kind of been like a, a generation long family business. Like the spoiled kid's family had been in this town for literally the longest time ever. And slowly but surely they've been accumulating kind of like more stores and restaurants and uh, you know, arcades and all this type of stuff, right? So the spoiled kid's dad would pop into the ice cream shop one day a week to kind of like do his managerial duties or whatever for half that day. And that'll be important later on the story too. So anyways, Ryan gets there and he's standing around with the spoiled kid and the spoiled kid doesn't even acknowledge his presence. Like the spoiled kid is on his phone. He looks up and kind of notices that Ryan walks in and immediately looks down at his phone. Look, I get it. Like the spoiled kid and Ryan, they don't need to be best friends. I'm not saying they need to be best friends. What I am saying, however, is that it would be kind of nice, you know, for the spoiled kid to at least acknowledge Ryan's presence as they will be working side by side for like the next nine weeks. This wasn't an entire like summer long, oh, actually two, nine weeks is like two months. Yeah, basically for the entire summer, bro. But no, spoiled kid was so focused on his, like, it's not even the fact that he was focused on his phone. Like, I get it. Like some people are just on their phone a lot, but it was really an intentional move. It's not that hard to look up and say hello. The spoiled kid was kind of here just showing how much that he didn't care. He thought that he was better than Ryan. And he also thought that he was better than Ryan, not just because maybe some sense of general ent entitlement that he felt for him, maybe disdain for most other kids in his neighborhood because, you know, his family owned half the, the neighborhood or whatever. So, you know, they better bow down to him and they're inferior, right? But also because I bet the spoiled kid felt like this job was very different than the job like Ryan was having because Ryan was an employee for his business. He was just chilling at his dad's business. In his mind, it was very different. 
However, the manager of the store, which was not Ryan's dad or the Spoiled Kid's dad, Spoiled Kid's dad owned the store. I think I might have said he managed it or something. He technically kind of did manage it, but he was very top level management. Like he would come in, check the books once a week, go around, ask how things were doing, and then leave to go deal with all the other stuff that he does. But the manager, uh, we're just going to call him the manager. So when I say the manager, don't get him confused with the Spoiled Kid's dad as they are two different people. So the manager is looking at Ryan and the spoiled kid, or the manager like steps out five minutes later after they both get there. It's like, hey, what's up? Like, what's up, guys? Like, my name's manager. It says his actual name, but we'll just stick with manager for now. My name's manager. Uh, I'll be in, I'll be your boss for the next nine weeks. Um, today we're just going to quickly go over all the responsibilities, all the stuff you need to do, uh, brush over some skills that you will you know get better at, but you should at least have a baseline to. And uh, yeah, we're gonna have a really great time. This is a really good environment and uh, let's just get into it. So basically the manager goes behind and uh, cause it, basically the store, it was basically just an ice cream store. There are some ice cream stores that are like also a burger place where you can also get ice cream, also an arcade. No, this was purely an ice cream place. There are a few seats inside, but you'd only sit down to eat ice cream. So he brought them behind uh, the place where all the ice cream's held. He said, all right, well, here's some scoops. Uh, show them how to get like that perfect scoop or whatever. Dude, whenever I watch people, whenever I go to like an ice cream store and I watch the person behind the desk or the uh, the counter, I should say, scoop the ice cream, I'm like, dude, that is going to fall off. And it never does. So there was a bit of a skill involved that I don't think I have. So I always have respect. You know, I always have a bit of respect for that. So anyways, it goes over the basics, whatever, and uh, they're sent home in an hour. This was a quick li little introductory thing and the real work started Monday the next day. Let's skip ahead till Monday, the next day, where things immediately off the bat, like immediately, man, Ryan realizes what he's getting into. Anyways, so on the very first day of work, uh, Ryan gets in there and he intends to take it pretty seriously because this is his first actual job. And, you know, his dad doesn't own the ice cream shop, so he can't really afford to mess up. Anyways, uh, so he's standing behind the counter. It's a relatively slow day. Uh, I don't totally know why it was a slow day. It's summertime, and I guess in the very beginning of the day, it's kind of slow. Not that many people are coming in at 10 a.m. to get ice cream, so they're kind of just standing around. You know, they have a few customers coming in and out, and, you know, I don't know, Ryan kind of very nervously does his first ice cream scoop to petrify that he's going to drop it or misplace it or just do something wrong, right? And uh, about around lunchtime, or a little bit after lunchtime, they're go they, go they go back to their stations, right? They go back to doing what they're supposed to do. And that's when Ryan looks over to see the spoiled kid do something absolutely insane. He, uh, he eats some of the ice cream, which, okay, okay, you might be thinking, Connor, Connor, relax. He's working at an ice cream shop. Okay, he's a little scoop, a little scoop for himself. How bad can that really be? I don't mean he takes a little scoop and, you know, maybe enjoys a little bit of it. Okay, you know, it's probably not great to do that, but also I'm not going to fault you for it. No, no, no. He reaches in with his bare hand. His bare hands. He reaches in and fists. Okay, I should not say he fists the ice cream. You guys are going to be weird. He goes in and gets a big scoop with his, with his hands, bro. He reaches in. And let me just say that this guy has not been washing his hands. Yeah, so Ryan watches this and just probably thinks to himself, I think that literally broke every code in the health code. I think every health, vi every health code violation that there could be has probably been broken by that action right there. And he watches as the spoil kid kind of like just continues to take big kind of like chunks of ice cream out of the ice cream and just like scoops it up with his bare hands, dude. Goes in, just like rakes it up with his hands. So look, Ryan's not going to say anything. There's no value in Ryan snitching on him. Like, I get it. Look, I don't, the whole culture of like, ooh, shouldn't snitch on anyone ever. That's kind of dumb. If someone does something bad, like maybe it's to your benefit or to the group's benefit for you to report it. But also like, you have to think, okay, it's very obvious who's going to be the one who reports it, right? If some, if it, look, if the spoiled kid gets an anonymous report that he's been uh, caught scooping ice cream with his bare hands, it's not going to be very anonymous when the only other person there is Ryan. And Ryan want, knows that he has to work side by side with the spoiled kid for the next nine months. So he doesn't want the next nine months to be literally a living hell. Yeah, but Ryan just watches as the spoiled kid takes big fistfuls of ice cream out of the out of the containers of ice cream and just is like thinking to himself, right? He's just thinking to himself, I've come to this place so often. Like I come here all the time and I used to come here all the time as a kid. 
Are you telling me that there is probably some teenager who never washes his hands and does unthinkable things with his hands? Uh, you don't know where those, where those hands have been, right? Has been scooping fistfuls of ice cream by the bare hand and eating them, and then right after serving me ice cream from this same container? So Ryan kind of had to double think, like double check really like, okay, am I really going to like eat here again? His kind of trust with really food at all has kind of been shaken up after that point. But here's the thing. The spoiled kid does not continue uh, or does not, uh, does not end with these actions, right? Every single day, bro goes in and is just like messing with the, messing with the stuff, messing with the ice cream, taking big scoops with his raw hand, raw hands, with his hands, with his bare hands, man. And that's when the spoiled kid takes it a little bit too far because uh, the spoiled kid is just so bored one day. It is a Wednesday. It is 10 in the morning. It is about a week in, right? No one is here at 10 a.m. on a Wednesday. It is super boring. Look, I'll give the spoiled kid credit. It's boring. So what does the spoiled kid do? He's like, yo, Ryan. Which, by the way, the spoiled kid and Ryan have spoken like three times in the last week and a half. So Ryan like looks over. He's like, you know, what is it? The spoiled kid then looks at him, has this kind of like mischievous smile slash grin, picks up one of the ice cream containers and puts it on the ground. So one of the kind of like the, uh, the bucket type things of ice cream he picks up and puts on the ground. And Ryan's looking over at him, kind of confused of, you know, what he's going to do next. A little bit worried about what he's going to do next. Fair enough, right? And the spoiled kid just kind of grins at him. And then proceeds to untie one of his shoelaces. And Ryan in his head is like, no. No way. There's no shot this kid is going... No. This can't... Unties his shoelace. Takes off his shoe. Proceeds to take off his sock... And with his bare foot, puts it in the frickin' ice cream, bro. Puts it in the ice cream. Look, it was bad enough that his bare hands were going in the ice cream. That's enough of a health code violation by itself. Putting your bare foot in the ice cream? Dude. Yeah, so, uh, guys, I'm not. this doesn't happen at your standard ice cream parlor, I don't think. So don't be afraid and don't be, like, scared away from eating ice cream. But, wow, Ryan was just looking at him. With this kind of this shocked look of just, what? So Ryan really doesn't know if the spoiled kid was trying to uh, impress him or just the spoiled kid cared so little that he was just trolling and he wanted someone to just witness his actions. I think that might make more sense. I don't think the spoiled kid was trying to impress the subscriber at all. I think the spoiled kid thought he was better than the subscriber. So uh, yeah, at this point, Ryan was like, oh man, I'm going to be sick. And the spoiled kid continues just more activities like this. Because two weeks later, the spoiled kid's friends come in. And they're, like, basically visiting when he, visiting him when he's, like, on the job or whatever. And one of them's like, dude, like, can you slide us some ice cream for free? And the spoiled kid's like, yeah, man, like, uh, you can have whatever you want. And, you know, Ryan knows at the end of the day they need to kind of, like, somewhat balance the books. So, yeah, the ice cream thing isn't as accounted for. And the, the manager doesn't really do this often. But you keep track of how many ice cream cones you sell. You keep track of how much inventory you use. But also, the, uh, so the ice cream scoops vary. So the fact that the spoiled kid had been, like, I don't know, grabbing scoops of ice cream or, or whatever wasn't really accounted for because 50 scoops of 50 ice cream cones uh, it could be a really ambiguous number. Like, it could be a lot of ice cream or a little bit of ice cream, depending on how big the scoops are. And then, again, how do you quantify a lot or a little? That's a good question. However... 50 ice creams also equals to 50 ice cream cones. So at this point, the spoil or Ryan already knew that there was going to be a problem because the spoil kid literally gave out like eight. Like either there's four kids there, two cones each. So each, so eight ice cream cones that were now unaccounted. I'm sure that the manager wouldn't have really, you know, cared if like one or two cones didn't go accounted for because I don't know. There can be defects um, in the packaging. Like it can come with one less or one more ice cream cone, uh, maybe something didn't ring up. Small things like that isn't really a big deal, but like eight, that's gonna be an issue. And sure enough, the next day the manager comes in, because I think the manager just happened to do an inventory check, and he's like, hey guys, um, I wanna make sure that when you're you know, you know, know, doing ice cream or like giving ice cream to people, that you really make sure to you know, cash it in, in the register. And the spoiled kid isn't even paying attention when the manager says this stuff. Just like an absolute 
and complete just like disregard for uh you know any kind of like a respect to the manager because this boil kid knew that you know the manager was manager of the store but his dad owned the store and the spoiled kid was like kind of not paying attention so it was almost like the manager talking to ryan and the thing is the, the manager wasn't necessarily accusing them of anything at the end of the day the store was doing fine in worst case scenario, Ryan's dad, or not Ryan, sorry, the, the spoil kid's dad could always divert some funds to the store, and eight ice cream cones were not going to make them go broke, right? However, that's, you know, it's not a good practice to have. Um, margins in general for, like, restaurants are really bad, so even a few, like, unchecked inventories could really mess up everything. Like, think about it. If you're only making, like, $1 for every $10 you sell, uh, like, y it's going to take, like, if you give away one item for free without getting any money, it's going to take 10 items to make that up that $10. I did that quickly in my head. It might not completely add up, but that's what I'm trying to say. It's like, it's scaling. So all of a sudden, giving away eight free ice creams is actually really expensive for the company. But anyways, right, who cares? However, the manager now is paying closer attention. So this spoiled kid continues on with his nonsense. But here's the thing. The spoiled kid start showing up real late. And by real late, I mean showing up two hours late. So one day, Ryan gets there, and they, they open their doors at 9 a.m. in the morning. So not a lot of people get there from 9 to 11 or 9 to 12. However, they're still open during that time. Yeah, so uh, anyways, though, uh, Ryan got there at 9 in the morning, as he's supposed to, and it's literally two and a half hours later at 11.30 that the spoiled kid kind of like strolls on in. And Ryan's kind of looking at the spoiled kid with this look of, like, are you serious right now? And uh, the spoiled kid is like, yo, what's up? And he just, like, goes, like, nothing happened. He just goes over to his seat, sits down, and goes on his phone. So Ryan, once again, you have to remember, look, Ryan is the only other guy who works there. The spoiled kid is the only other guy who works there as well. If Ryan makes a fuss, he, look, he totally, right, totally rightfully could make a fuss right now. This is really, like, obnoxious behavior by the spoiled kid. There's no question about that. However, Ryan also realizes something else, um, that he's stuck with the spoiled kid. And if he does something to annoy the spoiled kid, he knows the spoiled kid will basically clap back 100,000 times harder in the annoying department. So Ryan doesn't necessarily say anything, but he's kind of like, oh, where were you this morning? Did you sleep in or something? Kind of like trying to say, like, hey, man, you know you're supposed to be here at 9, right? Like, the time didn't magically change just because you didn't show up, right? Like, I was still here. Like, not a lot of people came through, but I was still manning this solo. And the spoiled kid kind of looks at Ryan. It's like, oh, yeah, you know, I mean, not a lot of people coming in the morning. Kind of thought I was like, whatever, you know, is what it is. And Ryan's like, yeah. You know, Ryan's not going to make the biggest deal. The truth was, I think they had like one, zero to one total customers during that time period. Ryan says that they were extremely vacant in the mornings in the ice cream shop. So it wasn't the biggest deal, but Ryan still wasn't super happy about it. Real quick, if you made it as far into the video, comment ice cream down below. That'll be the secret word of the day. And while you're in the comment section, check out the pinned comment on this video. There's a link to the Spotify page. I upload all of these stories as podcasts on there. And also a link to three other channels I try and upload daily on. So please subscribe to them as they are fairly new and your you subscribing actually helps out a lot. So uh, it wasn't really an issue until later on. For the next week, the spoiled kid would just not show up at all. So yeah, just for a random bit, the spoiled kid showed up at three. They closed at four, and it was a really busy day. And the thing is, it's fairly busy with one person, right? With one person manning uh, all the stations, it's fairly busy. Like they have a lot of customers come in, a lot of people to handle, a lot of people to manage, a lot of stuff to do. However, with, like, half the people there, it was, like, double the work. It was already barely manageable. It was manageable, but manageable just means you're getting by. Imagine you take manageable and you double it, right? Now it's starting to get really almost impossible to do. There was a lot of backlog. There was the line was getting long. Uh, he was getting, a, like, Ryan was getting a little sloppy with his orders, so he was, like doing the wrong thing, and people would be like, this isn't what I ordered, he'd have to do it all over again, which just honestly made it take even longer. There were probably some, like, uh, underchargers or not charging, I, I don't know, ton of issues, right? So Spoiled Kid, like, waltzes in, you know, at three, and Ryan looks at him, he's like, dude, like, where have you been all day? And the Spoiled Kid's like, ah, you know, 
I thought you could handle it. And it looks like you're doing a great job, man. Like, shout out to you. Like, shout out to you for doing such a great job. And Ryan's just kind of looking at him like, I'm not buying this, bro. I'm really not buying this. Shout out for doing such a great job. Like, come on, bro. Like, I- I'm not falling for such nonsense right now. So, uh, yeah. The thing is, though, it's like n- nothing he can really do because Ryan, at this point, yeah, maybe he should have reported him to the managers. Maybe he should have reported him to the higher ups, but he just doesn't. However, uh, the spoiled kid continues to skip, continues just to not show up. There are some days where the spoiled kid's there the whole time, but there are other days where he's not. He just shows up for an hour. Some days, some days he doesn't show up at all. However, the spoiled kid kind of thought that it wouldn't matter. It doesn't really matter. You know, dad's still going to pay me. Like, he owns the place. It's not like I'm going to get fired or anything. <laughs> ironic, but, uh, he made a mistake, though. The spoiled kid did not show up on a day, and he, if he only randomly chose this day to show up on, none of this would have went down. He would have been totally fine and probably could have continued doing this for the rest of the summer. However, the spoiled kid must have really felt too comfortable in his bed that day, and that was really what got him, because he decided to skip the day that his dad decided to check in on the store. So normally his dad comes in towards the later part of the day. So the spoiled kid sometimes would completely skip the day. But if he was kind of aware that his dad was going to come in for the last like 30 minutes of them being open, like he would show up towards the end of the day. However, this time the spoiled kid's dad had a big meeting canceled on him. He like blocked off his entire day for one person and they had to reschedule. So the spoiled kid's dad's like, well, this is like a really rare occasion. Uh, I guess I like can go do whatever I want. So he decides, all right, well, I guess I'll go see my son then at work. So yeah, the spoiled kid's dad walks into the store. So Ryan is managing the spot. It's, it's like 11, so there's like one or two people kind of trickling in or out. It's not too busy yet. It's going to be busy later. And Ryan just looks at the spoiled kid's dad. And Ryan's, the spoiled kid's dad's like, oh, hey, Ryan, how's it going? And Ryan's like, yo. And the spoiled kid's dad's like, oh, where's, uh, where's spoiled kid at? And Ryan's like, uh... I, uh, I, I think he's, uh, he, he's not here. Ryan's not going to lie. Like, Ryan might not have wanted to rat the kid out necessarily for more of the reasons of him not getting in trouble with the spoiled kid. But also, look, he's not going to, like, take one for the team when he knows for a fact the spoiled kid isn't even playing on the same team with him, man. The spoiled kid couldn't care less what Ryan does. And Ryan knows this. So the spoiled kid's dad's like, what? What, what, what do you mean? And, was, you know, he's like, uh, well, he just hasn't shown up. And spoiled kid's dad's like, what do you mean? Like, he, he tells me he comes in every single day. Does he come in every single day? And at this point, Ryan could be like, oh, this is the first time. No, Ryan's like, yeah, you know, he shows up sometimes. And sometimes he shows up towards the end of the day. But no, he is not here from 9 to 4, Monday through Friday. That is a fact. He is not here during that time. So the spoiled kid's dad looks really, like, shocked. Because I think the spoiled kid had been telling him about, oh, how good things have been going at the store, how he's been going in every day. I think the spoiled kid's dad was a little worried that he was pampering his son too much, so he was... Sorry. Sorry, I was just walking by. It's all good, man. (laughs) Anyways, I think the (laughs) spoiled... I think the spoiled kid's dad was, uh, you know, really kind of feeling like he maybe let his son get away with too much, and he was really excited that his son was really uh, excelling, you know, in the family business, too. So he was like, oh, that's great. So to kind of hear that it's all been a facade, and it's, you know, been a bait and switch, and the truth is that he actually has not been showing up at all, I think the spoiled kid's dad was like, oh, like, wh-. like I think he was, he was pretty upset. So basically, the spoiled, kid dad, the spoiled kid's dad explains his plan of action to Ryan, he's like, look, I don't think, like, like tomorrow, like, my son's probably going to come in, um, you know, and I'm going to, like, I'm not supposed to show up. But basically, I'm going to confront him tomorrow and ask if he was here yesterday. And he's going to say yes, and I'm going to catch him in the lie. And Ryan's like, uh, okay, like, <laughs> okay. Spoiled kid's dad's like, you can't tell him about it. Like, I need to catch him in the lie so I can really give a good punishment. And Ryan's like, okay, bro, like, whatever you got to do, like, all right, <laughs> okay. So yeah, um, the next day rolls around, and the spoiled kid actually does show up. 
Because remember, two out of five days of the week, the Spoil Kid shows up from 9 a.m. to, I'm sure he was like 20 minutes late or something, but basically 9 to 4. Um, the other three, he shows up for one hour or doesn't show up at all. So, yeah, he showed up, and uh, to his surprise, you know, a very r familiar guest walks through the door. Sure enough, it's his dad. Yeah, so uh, sure enough, his dad walks through the door, and he's like, oh, hey, guys, how's it going? And his dad, like, looks at Ryan and kind of gives him a little bit of a wink, and Ryan's like, oh, God. Because <laughs> Ryan, look, as much as he was going to enjoy watching the spoiled kid get chewed out for being a bad employee because of nepotism and thinking he's better than other people. At the same time, he knew it was going to be kind of an awkward situation because he knows that, one, the spoiled kid is totally going to lie when his dad confronts him, and two, it's going to be a little awkward when, uh, you know, he realizes that Ryan didn't let him know what was about to happen. So anyways, uh, so his, you know, spoiled kid's dad's like, oh, how have you guys been doing? They're both like, great, great, whatever. The spoiled kid's dad's like, spoiled kid, were, were you here yesterday? Like, did you clock in? Spoiled kid's like, yeah, I clock in every day. And the spoiled kid's dad, like, pauses for a second, almost like hoping that his son would rephrase, you know? And that's when the spoiled kid's dad kind of drops the bomb on the spoiled kid, and it's like, you know, I came in here yesterday, and you were not here. And I waited for a while. You were not in the bathroom. You were not on the premises. And the spoiled kid's like, uh... No, I was. Like, Ryan, back me up. Turns to Ryan, and Ryan's like, um, uh... And Spoiled Kid's dad's like, no, no, no. Don't put this on Ryan. I know you've been skipping. He's like, you know what? I'm not treating you any different. You're an employee of this ice cream shop. When you're here, when you're home, you're my son. And when we're in the car, you're my son. And every other place, you're my son. But right now, you're an employee of one of my establishments. And whenever any of my employees are stealing money from me as you're paid for the time that you're here, not showing up and lying that you're here or stealing from me, they will be punished accordingly. He's like, son, I hate to say this, but you're fired. <laughs> and Ryan was like, what? Ryan had no idea that it was going to go this far. He thought he was going to get chewed out, that his dad was going to be like, you're, I don't know, maybe a pay, like a demotion, maybe like he's going to like not pay him for the that last couple of weeks but straight up firing, Ryan's like, damn, bro. And the spoiled kid's like, oh, bro, like, it's not that deep. It's not that deep. And, you know, his dad's like, I'm going to I'm gonna treat you like any other employee I've ha I have here. If any other employee did this, they'd be fired too. And, you know, the spoiled kid's like, oh, whatever. And he, like, gets up and he leaves to go in the car. His dad and the spoiled kid drive home. And Ryan's there to leave, like, main the shop by himself, basically. But that's when Ryan realizes that his dad, the spoiled kid's dad thought he really did something. But the truth is, it doesn't matter. The spoiled kid's still going to have unlimited access to money. He's still not going to value money. He's not going to value hard work. And that this punishment actually probably wasn't a punishment. Because now the spoiled kid doesn't have to work a job and he can go back to being like doing nothing all day and just, you know, chilling with his friends and not having to work something. Uh, but maybe his dad made him work a real job somewhere else. Who knows? But at the end of the day, uh, Ryan had to man the ice cream shop by himself. But for that reason, the spoiled kid's dad, actually, he was trying to find him someone else for Ryan to work with. But he gave Ryan a bit of a pay boost, a little bit of a bonus at the end of the season, which was appreciated. And uh, Ryan had a busy yet a good summer. Having a great day because today I have a story of probably the most spoiled brat I have ever told on the channel. And I've told plenty of spoiled brat stories on this channel, but this kid might be the most spoiled and the worst. So yeah, sit back, relax, subscribe if you're new. We're going to call today's subscriber who submitted the story. We're going to call him Lucas. So this all started one day when Lucas was in seventh grade and he was riding the bus and it was the first day of school. So, you know, he knew everyone in school. You know, they've been going to the same school for like the last six years or whatever. And Lucas was on the bus with his friend. Uh, you know, they were talking about, you know, they were excited for the beginning of seventh grade. They were excited to see their new teachers, to see everything. To basically, they were excited to start the new school year and so they pull up and you know they're walking out and that's when they see this car pull up it is a black mercedes car it is like one of the fancier models probably goes for a couple hundred thousand dollars lucas doesn't know this at the time but lucas knows that this is a nice car so this really really fancy expensive car pulls up and you know the the door opens and this kid walks out 
And it's this kid that Lucas doesn't recognize. And it's because this kid is new to the school. And so this kid walks out. He's in these, like, newly pressed linen shirt. He has these, like, pants on. He's got, like, a really slick backpack. His haircut is, like, pristine. He's got new, like, whatever, super fancy shoes on or whatever. And he walks out and he walks into school. So Lucas, you know, his first class period is English and he sits down and, you know, the teacher's like, hey, everyone, welcome back from summer. I just want to quickly introduce our new student. And they point to the student and says, hey, can you introduce yourself? And so the student stands up and says, hey, everyone, my name is Ben. Uh, I'm new to this town. Uh, I used to live, you know, a couple, you know, a couple whatever uh, miles that way. But, you know, my mom had to move because my dad had a super sick job that just had us forced us to move. And, yeah. I'm going to be with you guys for the rest for the next couple years. So, uh, yeah, my name's uh, Ben. Nice to meet you guys. And, yeah. And the teacher's like, okay, Ben, that was great. And Ben sits down. And Lucas, who's in this class, is kind of just thinking to himself, okay, well, this kid sounds like kind of like a jerk, but maybe he just had a really bad first impression. I'm not going to judge him on that. So anyways, they're wait, uh, school, you know, the school bell rings and they go outside and they're kind of waiting to be picked up. So Lucas is picked up on the bus, which the bus comes like 10 minutes after school. And Ben is waiting for his super like sick Mercedes car or whatever to pull up. And so Ben actually approaches Lucas. And he's like, what's good, man? And Lucas is like, hey, how's it going? Welcome to the school. How's your stay been, basically? And, you know, Ben's like, it's all right here. It's all right. And, he's, and then Ben's like, so... What car are you being picked up in? And Lucas was like, uh, well, I don't, I don't actually get picked up. I, I ride the bus. And Ben's like, what? Uh, okay, well, uh, what car does your mom drive? And, you know, Lucas, he doesn't know, but it's not the most expensive car ever because, you know, his family's, his family's not doing so hot right now financially. It's things like this happen. So he's like, uh, I don't know. And Lucas is like, you don't know? Well, it can't be a good car if you don't know. My mom is driving a Mercedes S-Class, or I don't know. I, I'm not into cars. But anyway, she's driving, like, $200,000 Mercedes. It's about to pull up. Oh, there she is right now. And sure enough, the super fancy car pulls up, and the door opens, and, like, this kind of, like, blonde woman with probably about $100,000 worth of plastic surgery and these, like, big, really big black sunglasses leans out the, you know, the uh, the driver's side uh, seat and, like, looks out the window. It's like, Ben, oh, hey there, and looks at Lucas, and Lucas kind of waves timidly. She's like, Ben, you've already made new friends. Oh, ben, this is so great. And Ben's like, whatever, Mom. Bye, dude. And Ben gets in the car, and they drive off. And another kid, one of Lucas's friends, walks up to Lucas after Ben and his mom drive away. And his, one of, uh, and Lucas's friend is like, dude, that guy's kind of a jerk. And Lucas is like, yeah. Um, he kind of asked me what car my mom drove. And then when I said, I don't know, he says, well, it's probably a poor car <laughs> if you don't know. And then he said how much his parents' car's car cost. And then he got in and he drove away. And Lucas's friend's like, yeah, this guy's a, this guy's a, this guy's a pee-pee. Uh, they're in seventh grade, man. Maybe they said something worse, but I don't know. I'm trying to keep ads on this video. YouTube, don't thunderbolt me, please. Anyways, right, so the next day rolls around. And Lucas is kind of like, all right, well, me and Ben, we're not going to be boys. We're not going to be super tight. We're not going to be hanging out that much. But you know what? Fine. He can exist. I can exist. We will coexist, right? We just won't interact with each other that much. And that is totally okay. So they go to lunch and they're sitting down. And Lucas is sitting with some of his friends. However, this is a pretty big table so that there's a lot of open seats. And Ben walks in, and Ben kind of has a posse of kids behind him. Ben kind of has this like aura, like this aura of confidence, and people know that you know he's got a lot of money too. So for some reason, that just immediately made him popular. So Ben was walking in, and imagine him strutting in. So he's got his chest out, his arms are kind of waving back and forth a little bit. Ben is strutting into the cafeteria with his like army of little minions behind him, and Lucas looks over. He's like, "What?" and Almost every other table was full, so Ben and his minions, I'm going to call them that, Ben and his minions, they sit down at the table, and they're all, they already start talking, and Lucas and his friends were talking about how much they didn't like Ben, but were just going to like, whatever. 
So it's kind of like they all kind of look at each other when Ben and his friends sit down. They're all kind of like, uh, okay. So anyways, right, you know, Ben looks over and says, what do you boys have for lunch today? And, you know, they open it up and uh, I, Lucas has like, well, I got a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And Ben was like, uh, I mean, nice, dude. And Lucas was in his mind. He's like, dude, why? Why, why are you scoffing at that? Like, bro, are, are you serious? Are you serious? And, Lu- and Ben was like, yeah, I got a pretty standard lunch today. I got some leftover sushi from last night and also some cold cuts my dad made me on his grill. Do you want to hear about my dad's grill? It went for $5,000. And at this point, you know, Lucas is just like, he's zoning out of the conversation. He's trying to turn back to his friends because it's Lucas and his friends and Ben and his minions. They're all sitting at that table. So Lucas is kind of hoping that Ben will start talking primarily to his minions and Lucas can talk, go back and talk to his friends, right? But Ben is not letting that happen because Ben turns around again and says, So, Lucas... Tell me about you. What do your parents do for work? Which, first of all, when you say, tell me about you, don't you want to know about them? Why does it matter what their parents do for work, bro? But but anyways, right, Lucas is kind of like taken aback. He's like, well, um, I, I don't know. My, my dad, uh, my dad, you know, he, he, he works a couple jobs. Um, and Lucas is like, what jobs are those? Or Ben is like, what jobs are those, Lucas? And uh, Lucas is like, um, well, I mean, he just works a couple. I mean, he works at this movie theater. And Ben is like, oh, is he the manager? Does he own it? And Lucas is like, no. He just works a concession. But he also works another job. And Lucas and Ben is like, oh. So he's like one of those uh, minimum wage guys. Okay. And Lucas is starting to get a little bit upset because, you know, he doesn't get to see his dad that often. The reason why he doesn't get to see his dad that often is because dad is putting in the work. He's trying to support for his family. Want to make sure that Lucas, you know, has all the amenities he na- needs to grow up nicely right before he set off into the world. So Lucas is a little bit upset. So he doesn't ask back. He's trying to end this conversation. And Ben's like, oh, do you want to know what my parents do? Okay, I'll tell you anyways. So my dad, my dad, oh, I'm going to call him dad. So my daddy, oh, he... He's a lawyer, but he's not your standard, like, broke-ass lawyer. He's really good. He's really good. And Lucas is like, don't care, don't care, I just don't care. But all in his head, right, he doesn't want to say this. He's not trying to be a jerk explicitly. And Ben is like, yeah, he makes a lot of money. And he has a lot of crazy clients, like, all oh, those big oil companies and tobacco companies. He's, like, the number one for them. And Lucas and his friends kind of look at each other like, um... Why, 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 are we, why are we outing ourselves as the villain here? Come on now. <laughs> um, but anyways, you know, Ben is like, yeah, my mom, she's just a housewife. So useless, dude. And, and Lucas is just looking at his friends like, did you just call your mom useless, bro? Who raised you? Let's hope it wasn't her. What? Huh? Well, what's going on? And so Lucas and his friends, Lucas is like, oh, I got I to gotta go. And Ben's like, why? Uh, dinner's and done. Oh, lunch isn't over yet. And, you know, Ben's just like, um, well, I, I got to get prepared for a test. And all of his friends were like, yeah, we're in the same class. We got to prepare too. And Ben's like, all right, cool. And so sure enough, um, you know, uh, uh, Lucas and his friends, they get up. They walk out of there. Lucas and his friends don't have a test to prepare for. They just want to get out of there. So sure enough, Lucas and his friends are walking out. And they're just like, they start talking to each other once they're out of like, you know, earshot. They're like, oh my God, I knew that guy sucked, but that guy really sucks. Oh my God. <laughs> they were basically, they, they were done. They were dumbfounded. They had no idea just what happened. They have no idea how to comprehend the conversation they just had. So Lucas and his friends are like, all right, we're going to have to coexist with this guy. We, we somehow, you know what, as long as we don't have a class with him, We'll be fine. And that's when they figured out that he actually moved classes. And the next day, Lucas realized that he had a class with Ben.
Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment spoiled down below. I'm going to try and hard a bunch of comments to say spoiled, just to say thank you for just supporting the channel. And also, if you want to support the channel even more, sit down and watch a bunch of videos in a row, basically binge watch these videos, and let me know in the comment section how you're doing this, if you're watching them to go to sleep, if you're playing video games, if you're drawing art, if you're animating, if you're I don't know, mining Bitcoin, whatever you're doing in the background, right? Let me know in the comment section and I'll be putting random comments shouting out people who are supporting the channel like these people. Thank you guys so much. Let's get back to the story. This might be the most craziest spoiled kid story I've ever told. So Lucas and his friends asked if they were leaving the lunchroom after what just happened, which was crazy. They were like, you know what? At least we don't have a class with him. Two days later, Lucas is sitting in his last, in his math class. He gets there a little bit early. And the, the worst sight, the worst, the worst visual to cross his eyes ever happened because the door opened and Ben walked through. And Lucas was so confused, but that's when he remembered. It was early on enough in the school year that people can switch math classes. And uh, Ben was in the kind of the, the, the least advanced math class. You know how in some schools they have like accelerated kind of standard and then <laughs> subpar out dude i was in the subpar one sometimes sometimes so i'm not saying that as a diss i've been there but anyways right uh lucas realizes that you know ben was probably self-placed himself and super advanced and then just fell down two rungs of math classes and eventually ended up here and lucas was like oh no 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 no, 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 this can't be, this can't be. It's like when Michael Scott saw that Toby returned. Nah. Anyways, though, Lucas is like, all right, fine. It's math class. It's not like we're going to be collaborating a ton. I'm just going to sit here. I'm going to learn what I need to learn. I'm going to perform well in the tests. I'm going to ignore this Ben kid. I hate this kid. We are not talking. And that's it. So about a week later, the math teacher assigned random partners to do a big math project. Lucas was like, a project in math class? And the partners are randomized? Okay, well, what are the odds that I get Ben? Sure enough, the teacher goes in and puts all the names into a random, like, name pair generator website. He's like, all right, first pair, Lucas and Ben. Lucas was just like, God, I know you are testing me, but what have I done? <laughs> Why? What have I done? Anyways, right, Lucas is like, all right, I have to do it with Ben. That is fine. And the teacher's like, all right, probably for this project, the best thing you can do is to work together on the weekends. And, you know, Luke's like, and I have to go to Ben's house now. Oh, my God. So sure enough, Ben goes, comes over. He's like, what's up, bro? Let me get your number. And, you know, Lucas pulls out, you know, his, his phone. And Ben's like, bro, what generation is that? Is that like an iPhone Zero? Lol. This is, the, this is the newest iPhone ever. It actually has the most storage possible. And, you know, Lucas is like, that's nice, Ben. That's nice. Ben's like, oh, sorry, I wasn't paying attention to what you said. What's your number again? So Lucas, you know, gives Ben his number. They contact each other. And apparently Ben actually lives like a 10-minute walk. And Lucas is like, fine, I'm just, I'm just going to walk there, whatever. I don't even want my parents. Like, I don't want my mom interacting with his mom. I don't want them to become friends. I want none of this. So on a Saturday, he gets up and he walks 10 minutes down. And he can literally feel the neighborhood getting nicer and nicer with every step he takes. It's ridiculous. He's like, well, so this is apparently the nice part of town. Good to know I live in the bad part. What a lovely day. So Lucas keeps walking over. And eventually, you know, he's getting, he sees this really big, fancy house at the very end of the street. And he's like, well, I don't even have to check my maps. I know for a fact this is, this is Ben's house. So he gets, he walks over and he gets there and he rings the doorbell and he just kind of looks around. It's the most extravagant, exquisite house you have ever seen. It's like the most lavish, insert adjectives of money, <laughs> basically, right? And uh, sure enough, you know, the door opens and it's, you know, it's Ben's mom, you know, with the $100,000 of plastic surgery, the super, the, 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 still has the sunglasses on inside for some reason, has the big long blonde hair. And she's like, oh, Ben, oh, oh Lucas, I'm so excited for you to come here. Ben, Ben, your friend is here. Shut up, mom. Ben. So anyways, after a bit of yelling, Ben eventually comes down. And it's like, what's up? Let's just crank this math out, dude. Let's get it done with. And so Lucas is like, all right. So they head downstairs. 
to Ben's basement, which the basement is not like a standard basement, which is like wet and cold. It's like fancy and everything. It's great. Got like a thousand flat screen TVs, bars of literal solid gold. Um, maybe, maybe is like an alternative investment, but they go down there and there's this table. So Lucas has his backpack. He whips out his backpack and he's like, all right, let's work on this project. And Ben's like, so how much do I need to, how much do I need to pay you to do the whole project for me? And Lucas is like, what? And Ben's like, yeah, can I, can I give you like $5? That's like a ton for you, right? Like, wouldn't five dollars just like get a whole year's worth of rice and beans for your family to eat, right? And Lucas is like, he is barely keeping it in at this point. He's like, this might be the most insufferable kid I have ever met. And Ben's like, yeah, what, what, what do you want? Six dollars or something? Seven? Oh my god, seven must be crazy. Have you ever have you ever even seen seven whole dollars in your entire life? I don't think so. At this point, Lucas is like, no way. No, 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 no. This, this is not how it goes. This is not how it's going, right? No, no, no. No. This is not, this is not what's happening. Lucas is like, Ben, it would be a violation of the honor code for me to do all the work. He said, it's not going to be hard. Just sit down and do it for me. Ben's like, uh, uh, fine. I'll do it. Fine, Ben. Or fine, Lucas. Whatever, dude. And so sure enough, they sit down. And, you know, Ben's like, you know what? I'm actually not going to do this. I'm going to go play some video games. But my mom knows that I have a project, so you had to come over. And just don't tell her anything. Um, yeah. So if you want to fail this, go ahead and do nothing, right? I don't care about my grades, right? I don't care about my grades. Which Ben was kind of bluffing here. But Ben was like, I don't care, right? But I'm not going to do anything. And if you don't do anything, then both of us are getting an F. And I know the grades matter to you, buddy. So either you do something and we both do well, or you don't do anything and we both fail. I feel like it's a pretty, <laughs> I feel like it's pretty, pretty obvious answer here. And Lucas was like, this kid isn't just a jerk. He's evil, right? What? So sure enough, Lucas is like, no. In his head, he's like, you're not getting away with this. I might do this. I'm going to do the work, but you're not getting away with this. So Lucas just sits down at the table and says, fine, Ben. You drive a hard bargain, but fair enough. Th don't worry. Lucas did not concede here. This is not the end of it. Don't worry. So Lucas sits down, and after, like, grinding away for hours, he eventually finishes the project. And Ben, the whole time, is playing, like, on his Xbox. He's like, what? Are you done? Cool. See you later. See you tomorrow, or see you on Monday in class, buddy. And Lucas gets his stuff. He's like, bye, Ben. Puts his stuff together. Ben's mom's like, oh, come back soon. I, if you want. And, you know, Lucas is like, aha, uh -huh, thank you. Thank you very much. Lucas walks out, and he's walking down all the way back to his house. The entire way back, he's like, this is not over. Ben did not win this round. He won, the, he won this battle, but I will win the war here. But exactly how was going to be the hard part? Because Lucas knew that Ben could lie. And, like, if Lucas, like, turned him in and said, hey, I did all the work here, Ben could simply say, oh, well, that's a lie. I did the work. Prove it. Prove it if I didn't, right? And it would be really hard. And Lucas was, like, dealing, was trying to figure that out until it came to him. Ben has no idea what the project is. He has no idea what the continents of, or what is inside of the project. He doesn't know anything about the project. And if Lucas was to turn him in, he would tell the teacher, and the way that you're going to prove it is you're going to ask Ben to say anything about the project. You're going to ask Ben to explain what he contributed to without showing him the project. Because Ben did nothing, and he knows nothing. Ben might be able to weasel his way out if he actually sees the project being, being like, oh, that's totally me. I totally did that part, and that part, and that part. In fact, I did all of it. Like, you know, he wouldn't be able to do that if he never saw the project. And Lucas starts skipping on the... He, he's so excited, he starts skipping on his way back home. He is just full of energy because he has gotten Ben at his own freaking game. So anyways, Monday comes in. And, you know, the teachers, like at the end of class, the teacher's collecting projects. And Ben goes up with a project. And, you know, or Lucas goes up with a project. And Ben is like, walks up as well and says, hey, teacher, look at this project. Isn't it so great? And the teacher's like, ah, good job, guys. And so Ben walks back to the, to kind of like 
walks away, goes to the back of the classroom again, and Lucas kind of, like, stays up there and whispers to the teacher, hey, uh, c- can you wait a second after, c- c- can we talk after class for a second? And the teacher's like, okay, yeah, sure, whatever you want to do. And so when the bell rings, everyone leaves, and then, uh, you know, Lucas and the teacher are here, and Lucas says, hey, and Lucas explains everything that happened. He explains that Ben didn't do the work, but didn't just not do the work. He told him that, like, since he wasn't going to do the work, if he didn't want to fail, Ben ha- uh, Lucas had to do everything. And the teacher's like, wow, like, this is a really serious accusation. Like, not only will he, like, fail, but this is, like, this is part of, like, academic honesty because he said that this was his work. So Lucas says, okay, I know this is a big deal, but I, for you to prove it, just go up to Ben and tell him that, like, exactly what I'm saying, and then tell him to prove that he did anything by explaining anything about the project. Anything about the project. I am so confident that he didn't do a single thing that if he gets, like, a single part of our presentation correct, besides the cover, then you know what? Fine. He's off the hook, and I'm wrong. Even though I'm not, but I'm wrong. He doesn't get punished. And the teacher's like, okay, I'm going to do it. And so he's like, all right, I'm actually going to go to the, I know exactly what class that uh, Ben is in right now. I'm going to go pull him out of it because this is serious enough. And uh, yeah, all right, Lucas, I will keep you updated. So anyways, Lucas goes to his next class and he's barely able, right? He's barely able to focus because the only thing he can think about right now is, oh my God, he's like not interrogating Ben, but he's trying to, he's like, he's asking Ben, is Ben going to like, did Ben actually, did, did Ben like, figure out something about the project. I really went on a limb saying he won't know anything. Like, what if he just knows one single thing? What if he looked over and just remembers something? Like, oh my God. And he's going to know that I ratted him out. He's going to make my life terrible if things, oh my God, like if this doesn't work. And so after this class ends, he's walking, Lucas is walking to his next class. And that's when he sees his math teacher walking by. And his math teacher is like, oh, Lucas, can I talk to you for a second? And Lucas's heart just drops because he knows that this, this right here, this is the moment. Like if something's going to happen, it's going to happen now. So Lucas walks over and they both walk over to like an empty classroom and they walk in. And the math teacher's like, hey, Lucas, so I just want to tell you, I talked with Ben and I told him what, what you said to me and he denied everything. He denied every detail and he fa- in fact, he said that you were the one who was slacking and knew that you were slacking and didn't put in equal work so you wanted to cover it up and you told him that you know that you were thinking of like lying or something like that and Lucas is like what and the teacher's like I I don't know he explained it kind of weirdly but at that point it was a he said she said so it was a draw and Lucas was like no and then the teacher's like well at that point it was a draw but then I decided that I was going to go along with your kind of theory of asking him to prove anything, which he said he did most of the work, so that wouldn't be a problem, right? And Lucas is like, correct, if he did stuff. And the teacher's like, okay, so yeah. And I went to him and I asked him, I said, hey, tell me what you did in the project. And Ben replied, oh, let me see the project and I'll point it out. And I told Ben that, no, I'm trying to test if you actually know anything about the project, because if you did it, you certainly should. And while Ben said a lot of words and he made a lot of sounds and he did a lot of movements, Ben didn't tell me one single thing about the project. And I realized that what you were saying was 100% accurate. Ben is not only failing this assignment, but, you know, we've sent him to the deans for, you know, plagiarism and academic honesty. And this will be pretty severe on his record. Thank you for te- thank you for letting us know. And at this point, right, Lucas knew. Lucas knew that he won. Finally, after all this work. But Lucas also knew another thing. Ben wasn't getting expelled. He wasn't getting kicked out. And while Lucas did a pretty big damaging blow, Ben would surely, surely return. And Ben would probably be worse than he's ever Click on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. How's it going, everyone? I hope you're having a great day because today we have a story of a spoiled kid who gets so angry that he ends up burning down his entire summer camp. This may be the most insane story I have ever received, so sit back, relax, maybe grab something to eat, grab something to drink, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and let's call the subscriber who submitted this story Max. So this all happened one summer when Max was away at a day summer camp. So it wasn't a sleepaway camp, 
but it was a day camp that his mom would pick him up and drop him off every single day for a week. And this is a camp Max has been going to for a little while now. And so basically they would, you know, kids would be dropped off. They would do activities, kind of typical camp stuff. And anyways, on the first day, Max is dropped off and there's a bunch of kids over there and Max knows one guy and his name is Ben. Yes, Ben is not the bad guy in this situ in this story. Uh, but anyways, Ben and Max have been friends for a while. They actually met at this camp like two years ago. And while they don't really live super close to each other, or they just don't really hang out that much, they always make it a thing to try and always go back to this camp at the same time. Their parents stay in contact or whatever. So anyways, Max goes up to Ben is like, hey man, it's been a while. And Ben's like, dude, it's been so long. So good to see you. And they're kind of just waiting while all the new campers come in and are starting to talk to each other. It's kind of like the introduction day where you're supposed to meet a bunch of people. And that's when they see this really fancy car pull up. It has, it's like one of those like black Mercedes with like the tinted windows and the door opens up and this kid walks out. And sometimes you just know like when someone walks with a certain energy, a certain strut, you already know that they're kind of like at least entitled a little bit. You can just kind of see it in the way that they walk. Well, Max and Ben right away way could see this kid who we're just going to call the spoiled kid you know just the way this kid was walking you could tell that he was up to no good and he kind of got everything he ever wanted so sure enough right you know the spoiled kid walks over and he's like kind of looking around and he's kind of just hanging out by himself and at first max and ben kind of just assumed that oh you know kid probably doesn't know anyone let's go over and try and to you know talk to him little did they know that the spoiled kid wasn't talking to anyone because he simply thought that he was better than everyone else. But anyways, Max and Ben walk over to Spoiled Kid. They're like, hey man, like, how's it going? And the Spoiled Kid looks at them and is like, good. And Max and Ben are kind of like, hey, well, you know, we've been to this camp for a while. You're gonna have a lot of fun. I'm assuming this is your first year here as we don't, you know, we haven't recognized you. But if you have any questions, let us know. And the Spoiled Kid's like, okay. And Max and Ben at this point still, while they have a bit of a vibe from this kid that he's like, I don't know, being he's kind of spoiled or whatever, but these kids in the beginning, or Max and Ben kind of just assume, well, well, that's fine. He's probably just shy. He's probably just nervous. He doesn't know us, right? He doesn't need to be maxing our energy to be a good guy. You know, we're going to break through to this kid and he's probably going to be a great guy. Well, they were totally wrong with that sentiment, but it was a good sentiment. So anyways, right, the camp, after about like 10, 15 minutes, all the kids were dropped off. They were all checked in and the main camp counselor kind of like blew their whistle and said all right guys we're heading into the barn so basically there was a real there was like a barn where it wasn't like a like a i don't know it wasn't like a uh a farmer barn like where they had horses or something but it was kind of like a big open area and then attached to it was uh the rest of the building which had like a little art studio had a it was like kind of like a uh, it was a kind of a big building it wasn't like a massive like university building but it was a big enough building that you could have multiple you had like an art studio you had a big open area and there was also a pool that they would walk up to every day at least when the weather was good but we'll get to that later so they all walk into the barn area and the main camp counselor is like hey guys like welcome to camp whatever week two and everyone's like ah, whatever you know you know how that goes and, and the camp counselor is like okay so we're just gonna play a really quick game of like get to know you so walk around and whoever you see go up to them and ask them what their favorite thing to do is so max and ben you know they split up and they start walking around talking to a bunch of people and that's when max you know he sees someone goes up to them asks them oh what's your favorite thing to do and they say oh i love to fish or whatever and that's when max sees the spoiled kid and he sees of the spoiled kid who at this point he doesn't know is a spoiled kid he still thinks that this might be a good kid and that you know he's just struggling max goes up to him and sees that he isn't really talking to other people or he's kind of like avoiding other people and you know other people are like well if he's avoiding me i'm not gonna like go out of my way but max really does go out of his way to be like hey spoiled kid like spin a second and the spoiled kid's like hi and max is like so what do you do in your free time and the spoiled kid is like well I polish my watch collection. And Max is like, oh, that's sick, man. Like, do you have any, like, I don't know, <laughs> what kind of, like, uh, what kind of cartoon watches do you have? Because, like, literally in Max's mind, because this was a little while ago, he was thinking of, like, you know, those novelty watches of, like, SpongeBob funny watches or whatever. And he's like, oh, wait, do you have, like, a Fitbit or something? And Spoil Kid is like, no, I don't have a Fitbit. I don't have a funny SpongeBob watch. I have a Rolex aqua racer or submariner you you don't even understand what that is and at the time max had no idea he's like no i don't 
And the spoiled kid's like, well, it's a very expensive watch, and I spend my time shining it. And Max is like, okay. Max keeps walking around, talking to other people. At this point, you might be thinking, dude, Max, obviously this kid is spoiled. He's not a good kid. But Max is kind of was like, well, that was a weird interaction, but... I don't know. He's probably just nervous. At a certain point, you can't say that every interaction of someone being a jerk is them being nervous. But anyways, right, you know, Max is a good kid giving him the benefit of the doubt. So anyways, you know, they have lunch and Max and Ben are sitting around. They're excited for the week to happen. And they're talking a little bit about the spoiled kid. And they're like, I feel bad for that kid. Like he's not, he seems really nervous. He seems like he's not like trying to make friends. And they're like, no, what? While we shouldn't spend our entire time trying to, like, break through to him because we only got a week and we want to have fun here, let's still continue to try, at least today. So anyways, right after lunch, they go up to the pool, and, you know, at this point, this is where they start to realize how evil or how truly spoiled the spoiled kid is. So sure enough, they go up to the pool, and the way that the pool works is there's, like, one really big pool and they go in shifts of, like, 15 kids or whatever, because while it's a big pool, there's, like, 50 kids at the camp, or maybe they go in shifts of, like, I don't know, 20 or something. I, I don't know. It, it breaks up into about four groups or so, and there's about 60, 50 or so kids there. And so the spoiled kid, Max and Ben, were all all happened to be randomly in the same group, and they were in group two. So Max and Ben were talking, and they were watching as the spoiled kid, like, because there were bars around the pool. It was an outdoor pool. So there not bars, but there was, like, a fence, and you could see through the fence. And, the, and Max and Ben looked over, and they saw the spoiled kid with, like, both of his arms on, like, both of his hands on, like, the fence, kind of rattling it, almost like, you know, in the movies when someone's in prison and they rattle the prison bars or whatever. And Max and Ben go up to him. They were like, dude, what's going on? And the spoiled kid's like, I want to go in the pool. And Max and Ben are like, yeah, dude, well, we're about to go in in, like, five minutes or so. We're in group two. And the spoiled kid rattles the, like, starts rattling the fence again. He's like, bum, 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 bum. He's like, I want to go in now. And Max and Ben kind of look at each other like, uh, that's not a normal response, right? Like, like that's not how people normally respond to things, correct? Like, I'm not just going crazy. That isn't a normal person response. Right? And they kind of just look at each other like, uh, what's, what's going on here? And, this, and they're like, you know what? Uh, well, we're, gonna, we're all going in pretty soon. Like, there's no need to, like, overreact or anything. And the spoiled kid just gives them, like, a dirty look. And then goes back to, like, rattling on the, on the gate bars or whatever. And when Max and Ben, like, walk away, a camp counselor actually walks over, goes up to the spoiled kid. And while Max can't hear exactly what the camp counselor says, it's pretty clear that the camp counselor was like, like, bro, you can't be doing this. You're going to be on in like five minutes. Just wait over there. So the spoiled kid walks over, stands in a corner, crosses his arms and is all angry. And Max and Ben retreat. Oh, they don't retreat, but they go back to where they were standing before. And they, you know, Ben's like, dude, that kid's kind of weird. And Max is like, well, yeah, he's not as cool as I thought he would be. And Ben's like, dude, what? Like, why was he being so weird about not being able to swim? And Max is like, well, maybe he really likes to swim. And Ben's like, dude, you really think that? And, and Max is like, I don't know, man. I'm trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe the kid's having a tough first day. And sure enough, group two is called in. So Max, Ben, and all those kids, you know, they're in their bathing suits. They run over and they all kind of like put their towels down and they start to slide into the pool. And the spoiled kid in his mind is probably like, it's pool time and I don't get the pool to myself. This will not do. So anyways, the spoiled kid jumps into the pool, and then, this is kind of crazy, he immediately starts peeing in the pool. So you just see this big yellow cloud start to, like, form around the kid, and all the other kids are like, ew, oh my god, bleh, and they all start to run out of it. And some of the counselors are like, what? So they start to run over. And the spoiled kid is literally just sitting in a big pee puddle in the pool, and he starts swimming around in it. And Max and Ben are like, oh because Max and Ben have not even jumped in the pool yet. They're literally just like waiting to jump in. And then Max and Ben look at each other and are like, huh, what? <laughs> what? 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 And, and at this point, right, you know, the camp counselor walks up and is like, oh, buddy, did you have an accident? And, you know, the spoiled kid's like, what? Oh, I didn't know. I'm sorry. Or whatever. And, you know, they're like, well, buddy, you should probably get out of there. And the spoiled kid's like, no, I like it in here. And that's when Ben turns to Max and is like, wait a minute. 
do you think that that was on purpose? And Max is like, bro, what do you mean? He's like, well, he was complaining about not being in the pool, and he didn't like the look of it when everyone else jumped in, and then he peed everywhere, and he's staying in the pool. He's doing laps right now. And so sure enough, right, you know, camp counselors are like, buddy, you should really get out of the pool. And there's like 10 minutes left, and like, there's like, they're bringing over the decontamination kits or whatever. And he's like, no, I like the pool all to myself. And at this point, Max is like, wait, this kid did pee in the pool to get it all to himself. So basically what happened was the spoiled kid saw all these other kids getting into the pool, was like, I want this pool to myself because whenever I want something, I get it, and decided to literally urinate in the pool to get what he wanted, which is ridiculous, but he did it. So sure enough, and I mean, this is like the least, this is not the most ridiculous thing. As you can tell by the title of the video, it gets much crazier. But this is the beginning of when Ben and Max start to realize that this kid is just not a good kid and that he's basically just bad news. So sure enough, right, uh, the rest of the kids can't go into the pool. So basically group three, four, and I think there's a group five, they just all were told, sorry guys, you're gonna have to do field games. And they're like, what? And most of them didn't realize that the reason was was because uh, you know, the spoiled kid literally just peed up the entire pool. <laughs> That's the most ridiculous thing ever. He peed up the entire pool, man, and he was just swimming around in it. And Max and Ben were like, all right, so we're not going to go out of our way to hang out with this kid. So anyways, the first day ended, and, you know, Max's mom picked him up and said, hey, like, how was your first day? I know how much you love this camp. And Max tells her the story of this kid. She's like, wow, this is a very strange kid. And Max is like, yeah, well, I think this is probably it for him. And let me just say... That was not it for him. So the next day comes around, and when Max wakes up, it is pouring rain. His mom says, hey, honey, like, I just want to let you know it is pouring rain, so you will probably not be doing any outdoor activities or going in the pool today. So Max has dropped off a camp, and sure enough, they're having all their activities inside. And the first, like, activity, whatever, was some kind of, like, arts and craft thing. It was just Max and Ben chilling, hanging out, having a good time. But after that, you know, it was lunch. And normally, like, lunch isn't, you know, it, it's pretty standard. Normally, we'd think, oh, what happens at lunch? But basically, right, you know, there's kind of like a f five minutes before lunch started, you know, everyone has their lunch boxes. Basically, you bring a little container with all your lunch in, and you put your lunch box on, like, a bench or something. So there's, like, 50 lunch boxes, and, you know, Max and Ben, they walk out of their arts and craft class, and they go to their, uh, their lunch boxes, and they open it up and, you know, they go to it and they say, wait a minute, this has already been opened up. And Max turns to Ben and is like, bro, did, is yours opened up? And Ben's like, dude, mine's opened up too. And that's when they see that everybody's lunchbox has already been opened up. So like everyone's lunchbox has been unzipped. And, you know, Max is like, bro, where did my cookie go? And Ben's like, dude, where did my pudding cup go? And you start hearing murmurs from everyone else. Basically, they're missing one or two things, but they're normally missing the best part of their lunch. And that's when they hear this kind of crunching and munching noise, right? And they, and you know, so someone like walks to like the corner and they see that because there's like a curtain, because there's like a stage in the barn and they like hear a noise behind the curtain and they draw the curtain and they see the spoiled kid sitting there with basically, basically a mountain of like dessert items from everyone's lunch. And at this point, right, the camp counselors are getting so many, like, complaints about someone opened up my lunchbox and took something. And that's when they noticed uh, basically the spoiled kid with a massive pile of all the, uh, basically all the, um, all the complaint, uh, complaints of all the food that was missing. So, you know, the, immediately, Max and Ben are like, oh, my God, the spoiled kid must have, like, left arts and crafts early went through everyone's lunch boxes and just took all the good stuff and started eating it. So sure enough, right, you know, the camp counselors are like, you're coming with us. They take the spoiled kid out of there and they kind of reprimand him in the hall and everyone else runs over to the big pile and they're kind of like going through their stuff and about half the stuff has already been eaten. So half the kids are able to retrieve their, you know, their missing, uh, their missing dessert items while the other half are just left with wrappers and, you know, spoons and used pudding cups. Yep, Rip Ben, his pudding cup is gone. R.I.P. pudding cup, you know, you'll live another day or something like that. And so sure enough, Ben and Max are sitting down eating their lunch. And ben Max also lost his, like, cookie thing or whatever dessert thing he had. So he's pretty upset as well. He's like, dude, this Ben kid sucks. And they're like, yeah, you know, I and Ben was, like, or not Ben kid, this spoiled kid sucks. And Ben's like, yeah, I kind of got a feeling that he was a little weird when he decided to pee in the pool to have it all to himself. But this is like, this is overkill. 
And this is the least of what he does. As you guys know by the title, this only gets more and more insane. Real quick, comment spoiled if you made it this far into the video. I just want to see how many people made it this far. And then also, if you want to support the channel, all you got to do is maybe after this video or maybe later in the day when you're playing a video game, cleaning your room, drawing an art project, animating, trying to go to sleep, just literally binge watch a bunch of these videos. Watch like two, three, four, five of these videos in a row and let me know in the comment section, you know, how many of these videos you're watching, what you're doing while you're watching them. I'll try and heart the comments and reply to say thank you because it really does help support the channel. I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone watching right now. Even if you this is your first video or if you've watched like 30 of my videos in the last 24 hours, every bit of like every minute watched helps me out so much. Anyways, let's get back to the story because it only gets crazier from this point on. You might be thinking, wow, this kid's spoiled. This kid is not just spoiled. He is insane from this point on. Also, you might be noticing that the gameplay is no longer looped on the really long videos like these, and it's because I just upgraded my setup. I got a, like, I do my videos on my phone, so I got a better phone with more storage. So no longer will you have to watch the same gameplay three times. I'm sorry, I literally had no space on my phone. I had a very budget setup, but now you get new gameplay for every minute you watch. Anyways, so Max and Ben were sitting there and they're like, oh my God, this kid's actually the worst, right? So later, you know, so later that day, you know, uh, they, they see the spoiled kid is back and there's a three strike system at this camp. The very first day, I didn't go over this, but basically they said, welcome everyone to camp, whatever. They went over the rules and then they also explained their three strike system. Basically, if there's kind of a major violation or you basically, you just break one of their rules, you get two strikes and then on your third strike, you're sent home you're not allowed to come back. There's no like tuition refund or anything like that. You're just, you're just done, right? So basically, Max and Ben are pretty sure that the kid just got a strike. In fact, you know, the spoiled kid probably should have got a strike for like peeing in the pool, but like they didn't know that he did it on purpose, even though the spoiled kid very clearly did it on purpose just to get, you know, the pool all to himself. But right now, the spoiled kid was sitting with one strike, and he was not happy about it. The next day rolls around, and, you know, sure enough, uh, it is, it's a nice day. They're able to go outside. They're able to go to the pool. And in the morning activity, they actually have a big kind of, like, tag game. So it's a massive game of tag, and uh, Ben is actually it, and Max is not it. So Ben and a few other kids are designated as it, and basically you run around, and when you tag someone in this game, they also become it as well, so they can tag people too. It's like the zombie variation of tag, so like there's this, it basically gets to a point where like the, the numbers start growing exponentially, and then boom, everyone's done. So it's a pretty fun game, and the rounds are also fairly quick, and they did it so that more people could start as being it, more people could, you know, or and the other people that were it before could, like, be normal runners in the game as well. So sure enough, you know, Matt or Ben is kind of running around. He's getting people. And Ben eventually finds Max and kind of runs him down and gets him. So Max and Ben are kind of in a team right now trying to find people hiding because you can hide in this game too. And, you know, trying to find them, tag them down, get more people to the tag side. And that's when they see the spoiled kid. And Ben's like, you know what? For taking my pudding cup yesterday, this is going to be revenge. And Ben was a very fast kid. And the spoiled kid, uh, I'm not going to make any comments about his appearance, but let me just say that he was not very athletic at all. And it definitely, uh, it definitely was conveyed through the way that he wasn't able to run, basically, at all. So, yeah, Ben was easily, easily caught up with him. Ben easily caught up with him, got to him, tagged him, and not just Ben, Max, and a few other kids saw him be tagged, right? A lot of kids saw him get tagged, and the spoiled kid's like, you didn't get me, I dodged it. And, and Ben was like, dude, I, I clearly got you. And then Ben tagged him again. He's like, oh, I dodged that too. He did not dodge it, by the way. He was like, very clearly made contact. So that's when Ben like put two hands on this kid's shoulder and was like, tell me you're dodging this. And the kid like brushed him off and was like, I dodged. And then the kid starts to like waddle away. And, you know, Ben turns to Max and is like, oh, my God. So at this point, Max and Ben both tag him. And he's like, I dodged both of your tags. You can't get me, guys. And that's when one of the camp counselors sees what's going on. And he's like, hey, you know, why are you still running, kid? And the spoiled kid's like, I, Mr. Counselor, I dodged all of their tags. And the counselor's like, that's not what I saw. And then Ben tagged him again. He's like, I got you. And the spoiled kid's like, 
Counselor, counselor, did you see? I dodged that too. And the camp counselor was like, no, no, you, you got tagged, man. Like, it's fun. It's fun being it. Trust me. It's fun being it. You don't have to keep running. And the spoiled kid turns to all of them, all of them and said, you will regret cheating. You will regret cheating. And he starts, like, running away. And Ben and Max look at each other like, bro, what? And so sure enough, right, you know, there's another kid, you know, that was running with them. And so it's Ben, Max, and a third kid that are running. And so, yeah, so the three of them are running around. And that's when the spoiled kid comes up behind them, and he pushes Max and Ben over. He goes up behind them and does a massive push. They both fall over, and they watch as a spoiled kid turns around and kicks the third kid in the shin. And the kid's like, ah! He falls down. The kid starts crying or whatever. And one of the camp counselors saw the entire thing go down. He's like, hey, you, what did you just do? The spoiled kid says, they just all tripped. And, you know, the counselor's like, hey, I know you. You're the kid who, like, ate all the food yesterday. And, like, no, they did not trip. They're, like, I saw the whole thing go down. You push those two kids, and then you kick that kid, and he's hurt. In fact, I think they're all hurt. You're coming with me. And he, like, takes out his phone. And he calls another counselor. He's like, hey, I need backup or something like that. And so another counselor comes over, assists, like, medically with, like, Ben, Max, and the third kid. Ben and Max were fine. They had some scrapes. But the third kid got some damage. Like, he didn't break anything, but he was in a lot of pain or whatever. And so the spoiled kid, once again, was taken away. And that means that he was now on two strikes. And he was very angry that he was on two strikes because two strikes means you're one strike away from being kicked out of the camp. But also when you're on two strikes, you're, you have a lot of your privileges kind of revoked. For example, the spoiled kid was no longer allowed to go swimming. However, he had to go up to the swimming place. He just had to sit there and watch the other, other kids swim because they weren't going to have a counselor stay just to guard like the one kid. But they also didn't want to reward him with swimming if he's been terrible for like if he has two strikes, you have to be pretty bad to have two strikes. So anyways, that day, up at swimming, uh, Ben and Max are waiting around for, you know, their group to be called. And the spoiled kid, he's just standing there, and he is very angry. And, he, and you know, he goes up to Ben and Max. He's like, you two were cheating today. You two were cheating today, and all I did was I got revenge for your cheating. And because of that, I'm being blamed. And Ben and Max were like, yeah, you're blamed for, first of all, first of all, Ben's like, we were not cheating. We touched you a billion times, and you said that you dodged it. Explain how you dodged that, because you did not. One of the camp counselors saw the whole thing and even proved that you, in fact, were cheating. And then you decided, after running off and crying, because you're a little baby boy, and at this point, like, ben, Max is like, bro, Ben's going off, because you're a little baby boy, right? And you decided to come around and, and push us and then kick that guy in the shin because you can't handle losing because you're a loser? At this point, Max is like, I, or not Max, the spoiled kid was like, I was already upset because of my two strikes, but now you've pushed me over the edge. This can't mean something to you? Well, it means nothing to me, and I will take it down single-handedly. And, you know, Ben and Max are like, okay, dude, like, whatever like what? What, what 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 are you saying bro little did max and ben know that the spoiled kid was not just saying i'm gonna take down this whole summer camp he's not he wasn't just saying that for saying that he wasn't just saying that to try and scare them these weren't random comments these were <laughs> as the people who read the title of this video already know by the way drop a like in the video if you haven't already i don't normally ask but just check to see if you have Basically, right, Max and Ben didn't think anything of it. So the next day comes around, and this time, like, the spoiled kid brought something from home. A little something that you use if, you know, if, if you smoke, which you shouldn't, you might need something to light your cigarette, right? You might need something like that. But there are multiple use, uses for a lighter, as you shall see. So anyways, on this now infamous day in, like, Max's life, because it's a crazy day, he goes in, and it's, a, it's pretty normal, and so for the first half, before they go swimming in the afternoon, they're just doing some simple crafts again. 
So remember this building has like a barn, which is like a big open area, and the big open area is attached to kind of a wing in a sense, like a hall, which attaches to like several rooms where kids are able to do like crafts or whatever, as well as there's one kind of like camp counselor's room with like the all the office paper and all that kind of stuff. And remember in the barn, there's a stage which has curtains. So right, Max and Ben are just, you know, they're sitting around and they're doing their crafts and they're like, Dude, like, the spoiled kid was here earlier. He has to go to the bathroom, and he's been gone for, like, 20 minutes. So Max and Ben are like, dude, that's really weird. And, you know, Ben's like, well, I mean, I kind of have to go to the bathroom. Do you want to come with me? That's not a weird request. They just wanted to, like, mess around in the bathroom. Not like that. Stop being weird. You know what I mean. And so Max and Ben, you know, they both asked to go to the bathroom. The camp counselor is like, okay, he's like, don't, don't mess around. Don't just play games in there the entire time. So they, they walk out, right, and they're walking down. And so the bathroom is right by the barn. But that's when they see that the barn door is open. And they're like, why is the barn door open? And they look in there, right? And they start to, like, smell a really weird smell. It is the smell of smoke. So they look in there, and they see the curtain, right? And they see the curtain is catching flame. And what they also see is the spoiled kid standing, sitting, or kind of cr- like kneeling or crouching or whatever on the other side of the curtain with the lighter trying to catch that side on fire too. So at this point, Ben and Max are speechless. They are stunned. They turn to each other and they sprint back and they go. They start slamming their fists on the camp counselor's door, like the door for like where they all sit. Bum, 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 right? And so they open it up and like some camp counselor was like, what's up, dudes? Like, you guys get in trouble or something? They're like, no, 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 come with us. So Ben and Max are like running down. The dude's like, guys, calm down. And that's when Ben and Max get to the barn. They open the door and they point. And they point to the, the, the curtain now catching complete flame and also the spoiled kid lighting, trying to like light the other side on fire. And the camp counselor was like, holy... And, you know, and then, you know, he's like, he gets on his phone and he's like, emergency, emergency. And he goes to the fire alarm, pulls that sprinkler system start to go right. But the thing is, the fire is now spreading. This is like a wooden, it's like wooden carpet, everything. This is not this, this like barn, this whole like facility was made a while ago, bro. This thing was made like when the fire safety rules were not as good. So the sprinkler systems were okay, but the fire was just starting to spread really rapidly. And the camp counselor grabs the spoiled kid and says, you're coming with me. And all the kids are walking out in a single file line and they all stand out in the field. And most of them think, oh, it's our mandatory fire drill or something, whatever. But that's when one of the kids is like, well, I smelled smoke. And so Ben and Max turn around and they start telling every kid what they saw. And the rumors and the truth start to spread insanely fast. All the kids are now telling everyone that the spoiled kid, the pee-pee boy, the one who ate all their food and kicked a bunch of people because he'd lost in the game, decided to burn down the camp out of revenge. So rumors are starting to spread. All of a sudden, they start to smell smoke. And that's when they see... You know, smoke starts to pour out of the rooms, out of the windows, and that's when they start to see a flame catch. It is the craziest thing because for the next 20 minutes, you know, they hear like a fire department coming, but they see the place starting to just completely burn down. Like for some reason, whatever, some maybe like the electrical system caught and then boom, something exploded or all the insulation caught. I don't know what happened, but it just, the entire place basically went up in flames. And the entire time, like three camp counselors basically had like the spoiled kid like and not in handcuffs but they had him like you know they surrounded him were interrogating him were like shouting at him and you know the spoiled kid's mom appeared and she runs over and camp counselors start like shouting and pointing and pointing at the building pointing at the spoiled kid and max and ben are just like oh my god oh my god like this is insane and max is like all right well i knew this kid was weird but like bro what And sure enough, the fire department comes and, you know, they start, they put out the fire. But at this point, the entire, like, building is charred. It is gone. It's not burnt down to, like, the floor. But all they have left is, like, the outlines of the structure of the building. It is intense. So at this point, right, the kid got his third strike. Okay, it's a little bit more, (laughs) it's a little bit more worse than the third strike, right? So at this point, there are still two days left to camp. And the, uh, the camp basically sent out a parent saying that, like, there was a, there was a rogue, ca- like, kid that went and, like, tried to, like, burn down the, the camp, basically, and that 
you know, they could either have a, you know, a 30%, like a, or a like 10% reduction, like a, to a fee, a tuition, I guess, um, uh, refund. Because like a lot of it was already spent on like paying the counselors and the equipment. They said, we can give you like a 10% refund or, you know, the kids can come with us for the next two days and we'll just be at the pool because that obviously wasn't affected and do field games at the pool. Like it's a terrible circumstance what happened, but we understand if you don't want your kid here anymore. So sure enough, right, Max and Ben, they came for the next two days and it just wasn't the same because of what just happened. And anyways, right, they have no idea what happened to the spoiled kid. Because police obviously got involved, but he's also a a kid, right? So I don't really know how that all works out. And, you know, Ben and, you know, Max, they never saw him again, obviously, because he did not return to the camp. Probably because he was banned for life and probably wasn't allowed at any other camps as well because, like, word got out, you know? And so Max and Ben actually did return to the camp the next year. However, it took place at a totally different location. Like, for the remainder of that camp's existence, they were never back at that location because they never rebuilt it. I think something else eventually got built there later. But Max and Ben, still to this day, whenever they go to the camp and they meet a bunch of new campers, Max and Ben, eventually, when they were older, they became, like, uh, counselors in training. And then when they decided to become actually counselors, they would always tell the story of the spoiled kid every single year. And it kind of became an underground camp legend. Yeah, so subscribe. Click on the video on screen right video, now. Please. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it, do it. How's it going, everyone? Today we have a story of probably one of the most spoiled kids ever breaking his brand new $10,000 gaming computer because he was big mad that he lost a video game. So, yeah, sit back, relax, subscribe if you're new. And let's call the subscribers who submitted the story Zach and Ben. So, yeah, this is kind of a duo story. I haven't done one of these in a while. So Zach and Ben went to school together, and there was this new kid, and his name was Liam. And in the very start of the year, like, Liam was kind of like, you know, he's new to the class, you know, Zach and Ben went over, and, you know, they were nice to him, but they never really befriended him like that. They never really became that close. And actually, unlike in a lot of my stories, when someone new comes, you know, and they're befriended right away, and then they're found out to be kind of weird, Zach and Ben, you know, didn't even befriend Liam till about halfway through the school year. They just happened to be assigned, like, the same project, or maybe, for some reason, they all happened to be in the same area or the same vicinity, and Zach and Ben really, you know, got a liking to Liam, and they all got, a, they all got along really well. So all of a sudden, right after a couple weeks of hanging out after, you know, figuring out that, you know, each other were cool, Liam invited Zach and Ben over to his house. He said, like, boys, you got to come over. I'm, like, getting my new, like, gaming computer this weekend. It's really crazy. It's, like, the top-end, top-end gaming computer. Basically, Liam came from, you know, a, a household that had a little extra little extra bread, a little extra cash, if you know what I mean. And, you know, his parents would, you know, occasionally let him spend it. And by occasionally, I mean always. And by spend it, I mean dropping big bucks. So Zach and Ben, kind of being aware of this, where, you know, they liked Liam as a friend, but then they were also excited to play on, like, a $10,000 gaming computer. They'll be like, oh, my God, think of the frames per second. Oh, my God, this is going to be crazy, right, or whatever. So that weekend, you know, or Zach and Ben go back home. They both ask their parents, like, hey, mom, do you mind if I go over to Liam's house? And they're like, yeah, sure, like, this weekend. Like, yeah, okay, that's fine. So anyways, the weekend comes around. Zach and Ben, or Ben takes a ride with Zach, and, you know, Zach and Ben, you know, they go over. Zach's mom drives him over, and Zach's mom's like, all right, well, have fun, you guys. And remember, you can always call my number if you need anything. And they're like, yes, of course, mom, it's all good. So they arrive to Liam's house, and, you know, Liam greets them at the door, and, you know, they're like, oh, like, this is going to be a lot of fun. And Liam's like, like, boys, I've just been setting up the game computer all day today. It is the craziest thing you will ever see or have ever seen or ever played on it is the most epic the most awesome the most fantastic gaming computer ever like every game is running so smoothly it's crazy so obviously zach and ben are really excited to go up and play on the new computer so they all run upstairs and they go into liam's room and they see it and it is like it is has there's a massive monitor there's a big like a uh, gaming pc that has like very fancy like water cooling or whatever it's got the rgb lights it has like 
cool mouse or whatever, big gaming desktop. It is like if you play video games, it is basically the the peak of anything you could want for a gaming setup. It, I mean, it definitely wasn't minimalistic if that's your style, but otherwise it was the peak of like any gaming setup ever. So obviously Zach and Ben were really excited to take like take a swing at it. So, you know, they run over and Liam's like, wait, wait, wait one second. I'm just going to like, I'm still playing on it. I'm, I'm mid game. And he was not mid-game, but basically Liam sat down and is like, S like, sit back, relax, and watch some gaming. And the thing was, right, uh, Zach and Ben, while they were friends with Liam, they also did want to try out the video game themselves. I mean, it was fine to watch. I mean, look, bro, like a lot of people watch YouTube videos to watch other people play the video games. That's totally fair. Like, when I was a little kid, I would go over to my friend's house and, you know, I would actually enjoy kind of the experience of watching them play because it was like I was kind of playing along and I also knew I would have been trash so it <laughs> I actually didn't mind it but you know Zach and Ben kind of did they you know they kind of wanted to play along but Liam was like oh, one more game I'll get you guys on next game and you would say that again and again and hours were kind of going by and all Zach and Ben were doing were watching was watching Liam play like I don't know like Counter-Strike or something and Liam was okay but you know everyone else in his lobby was a little bit better so they were basically watching their friend lose in 4k ultra hd <laughs> with 10,000 frames per second bro like it doesn't matter if you have 10,000 frames per second you're still gonna lose if you're not better than the other person specs are pretty good but they're not gonna make it if you're not good so liam started to get progressively angrier and angrier and Zach and Ben were like bro if you ever want to take a break we'd be happy to swap and he's like no I gotta fix my KD ratio which basically that's the ratio of like how many people like how many people you get versus the number of people who get you in like video games in a lot of cases and uh since uh you know Liam was losing a lot more than he was winning his KD ratio was getting worse and worse and it's almost kind of like the gambling mentality like oh I gotta like gamble my way back to the money I've lost through gambling. It's like, bro, stats are not, stats are against you on this one. And, uh, you know, Zach and Ben were just watching as Liam was like doing worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And every single, like, he'd be like, God, ah, this game is rigged. And it wasn't just everyone else was better than him. And Zach and Ben were like, bro, do you want to like do something else? Cause at this point, Zach and Ben look at the, uh, they look at the clock and it's about like three hours since they've been here. And all they've done is they've watched Liam play and fail Counter-Strike for three hours. So either they want to get a turn on it and maybe play Counter-Strike or a different game, or, you know, they're still friends with Liam. Maybe they just want to go and do something else with him. Maybe they just want to go and, I, I, I don't know, man, like maybe they just want to go and play outside or watch a movie or just do something else from watching him lose and get angry at Counter-Strike again and again. So Liam, Zach and Ben are like, oh, dude, like when's, when do you want to, do you want to go outside or anything like that? He's like, bro, did you not hear me? I got to fix my KD in Counter-Strike. Like, I keep losing. I got to fix the ratio. Like, it's going to take a second, boys, so strap in. And they're like, they, Zach and Ben kind of look at each other like, bro, what's going on here? But the thing is, right, they, Liam keeps getting angrier and angrier and angrier. And this is where kind of like things start to get a little bit interesting. Because Liam, in his rage, is starting to like slam on his desk. He's like, Bruh! every single time he loses. And every single time he loses, which is a lot, he starts to get angrier and angrier. And then he takes his mouse and slams it on his desk. And it doesn't break the mouse, right? But it's, it's risky. It could have broken. It, it, the mouse could have broken, right? So Zach and Ben kind of look at each other like, uh, uh, this is not progressing in a good way. Because sure enough, right, you know, Liam was getting angrier and angrier, and he was, like, pounding his fist. And then one time, he even kicked his gaming computer, which they're like, whoa, chill, bro. Because imagine just a clean kick to the gaming computer, bro. You could have just destroyed the entire thing. Like, sure, that one thing wasn't $10,000. It was kind of the whole setup put together. But that's a good, like, five, $6,000. He got the craziest specs ever. And so Liam was getting angrier and angrier. And Zach and Ben were like, okay, this is not great, right? <laughs> you know, he's starting to, uh, he's starting to lose it a little bit. And he was like, bah, bah. and this is where the whole climb, not the whole climax, but this is where things start to get really crazy. Because Liam, this, it seems like a random game, but this was a really important game to Liam because he'd been losing for so long that in his head, he said, Liam, you need to win this game. You need to do it. 
And, you know, Zach and Ben were just thinking it was a normal game, and they were watching, and Liam was getting shot. He's like, ah, no, 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 I'm good at this. I'm good at this. He starts going around. He starts panicking. Starts, like, just has no aim at all. Completely misses everyone. And when it says, like, I don't know, you lose or whatever, Liam just is silent. Because normally for the last hour, he's been like, ah, like an angry grunt. So Zach and Ben at first think that, oh, well, this Liam kid finally is getting over his rage problem. But they were soon, within three seconds, completely proven wrong when Liam takes his fist and goes, bah! and just goes, boom, into the, like, the, the monitor screen. The entire screen is, like, cracked and destroyed and falls over the desk. And then Liam stands up, and Zach and Ben are looking at each other like, oh, my God. And Liam is like, yeah, and takes his, like, like takes his like foot and just goes boom and kicks his gaming computer with such force that actually lifts 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 up off the ground flies for a little bit hits the hardwood floor and shatters and explodes and water starts leaking out of it for like the water cooling and little bits and pieces go everywhere and that's when liam flips his desk takes his mouse, swings it around on the mouse cord, is screaming the entire time, and throws it against the wall. The mouse explodes as well, and Liam starts huffing and puffing. He's like... <sighs> and at this point, Zach and Ben are just, like, looking at each other like, oh my god, bro, oh my... God. Anyways, if you've made it this far into the video, comment, uh, spoiled down below. That'll be the secret word of the day. And then also, if you want to support the channel or keep supporting the channel, because honestly, just watching this far into the video helps support the channel a lot. All you got to do is maybe after this video, maybe at a later point, sit down and watch a bunch of videos. Watch one, two, three, or just binge watch the videos. And in the comment section down below, let me know how many videos you watched today and also what you're doing while you're watching the videos. Are you playing a video game? Are you I don't know, drawing, animating. I saw some people like writing like a screenplay, trying to go to sleep, cleaning your room. Let me know. I'm curious. Anyways, let's get back to the story because let me just say that Liam is starting to regret what he did. So anyways, Zach and Ben are just standing there, just looking around the room, just looking at the damage of the situation. So they're looking around and... So, yeah, Liam's monitor is, like, completely cracked and destroyed. His desk has been flipped over. Um, the, the big gaming computer has spilled into a billion pieces, is all over on the floor, cracked liquid, completely destroyed, probably, like, $5 of value left, right? The mouse isn't even a mouse anymore. It is splattered into a million piece pieces, and there's, a, like, a, there's like a crunch mark on the wall. It is, like, cracked where he slammed it. And Liam is still like, <laughs> and Zach and Ben are like, oh my God, bro. Like this kid just went crazy because they knew how much this was. Liam was toting how it like overall cost $10,000 and how he just got it. And after having it for like three hours and just not being good at Counter-Strike, instead of being like, let me just close down, shut down my computer and go outside because I'll probably enjoy the video game another day. I'm actually just going to break my entire setup out of rage. And slowly, Liam is like, uh, uh, oh no. Oh no, no, no. Oh no. What did I do? Boys, what did I do? What did I do? And they turn to Zach and Ben and they're like, um, bro, I don't know how to put this, but I mean, I mean, you did just break your entire setup. And he's like, no, 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 this can't be happening. This can't be happening. I did just, and they're like, um, I mean, you did just do it, but um, he's like, boys, like, I, my parents know about this. This was, like, my big gift. Like, I'm not even, like, this is, this sucks, but they can't know about it. And, and they're like, uh, Zach and Ben are like, um, well, and they look around the room, and there's just bits of computers all over the place. The thing's leaking. Everything's destroyed. There's cracks on the walls. They're like, uh, well, if they come in, they're going to see this. And he's like, okay, boy, I'm sorry. Like, I know you wanted to play on it, but that's probably not going to happen now. And Zach and Ben just look at each other like, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen since the gaming computer is in 100,000 pieces on the floor right now. And Zach's, or, or Liam's like, we need to hide this. Like, I need your help. Like, I, I'll make it up to you guys. We'll have, like, we'll do fun things. Like, later, we just got to clean this up. Like, my parents cannot know. And, you know, Zach and Ben are like, I mean, okay. I mean, Zach and Ben weren't going to be, like, 
I don't know, asses and be like, haha, lol, suck it, dude. They're going to help, right? So they go downstairs and, you know, Zach sneaks downstairs and Liam says, okay, the trash bags are in the closet next to the basement. So he goes downstairs and Liam's mother's like, Zach, how's it going? And Zach's like, ha ha, it's going great. There's no gaming computer in a thousand pieces upstairs. <laughs> no, but he's like, yeah, it's going great. Thanks for, thanks for asking. And she's like, oh, what are you down here for? And he's like, uh, because he can't say, oh, I need a trash bag to put all, to hide all the pieces of the $10,000 gaming setup that your son just destroyed after three hours of being garbage at a video game. And he's like, uh, a glass of water? And she's like, oh, let me go get you one. She runs off into the other room. Zach is next to the closet, next to the basement. He opens it up. He sees the trash bags. And then he hears her coming back, so he quickly closes the closet door and intercepts her. And is like, thank you so much for the glass of water. She's like... Oh, you're welcome. She goes into another room. Zach opens up the closet door again, reaches in, pulls out a trash bag, quietly closes the closet door, runs back upstairs. And Liam's like, bro, why do you get a glass of water? He's like, long story. Hands the trash bag. They start putting parts of the gaming computer, whatever, in there. Liam's like, bro, why did you only get one? And Zach's like, uh, he's like, we need more. Zach's like, dude, I don't know. I've never broken a $10,000 gaming setup before. And Liam's like, not funny, bro. Just get another trash bag. So he goes back downstairs. And Zach's mom's like, oh, you're back down again. He's like, oh, yeah, I just got to use the bathroom. And she's like, oh, did Liam not tell you about the bathroom right next to his room? And Zach's like, ah, ha, ha, I guess not. And she's like, oh, well, it's, it's over here. Let me show you. And so Zach goes to the bathroom, basically just stands in the bathroom for a minute, not doing anything, and then leaves and sees that, you know, once again, uh, you know, Liam's mom is in the other room. So just goes by her quietly, goes into the closet, and just takes like three trash bags at this point, goes back upstairs and... Thankfully, those three trash bags are enough to kind of uh, enclose every or get everything, all the parts and everything to go into the trash bags. They put it in his closet. They, you know, they put the desk back up because while the desk was like, like flipped over, it wasn't completely destroyed. It had some cracks on it. There was still chipped paint on the wall. There was nothing they could do about that at that time. So they're just like, oh, shoot. Um, so anyways, like Liam, like gets a piece of paper, draws something on it is like, Welcome to Liam's a crib or whatever, something corny, but whatever. He takes that piece of paper, tapes it over the part on the wall with the massive crack on it. It's like, okay, this shall do. So anyways, Liam, Zach, and Ben, you know, they go downstairs and Liam's like, do you want to watch a movie? And they're like, yeah, sure, that sounds fine. They watch a movie downstairs and Liam or Zach and Ben are just texting each other the entire time like, oh my God. What just happened? Ben's like, bro, I'm trying to play in that $10,000 gaming setup. Like, what happened, bro? But anyways, they go upstairs when, you know, Liam's mom's like, oh, like, it's time for dinner, boys. Like, are you guys ready? It's time for dinner. So they come upstairs and, you know, the, the, the table's all set for dinner and they sit down and, you know, Liam's mom made a really good, like, steak roast. So she made something. I don't think a steak roast is a thing. She made really good food. They're all sitting around enjoying it. And that's when Liam's mom is like, so Liam, did you show the boys your new uh, video gaming thing that we bought you for your birthday? And, he turn and she turns and she's like, boys, it's a very special video game thing. I'm like Liam and I sat around we, and I got him the greatest stuff for video games. And Liam is like, ah, ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha. yeah, <laughs> yeah. And Zach and Ben are like, ah, okay, yeah, we've seen it. And she's like, boys, like, isn't it so great? You know, uh, Liam, you know, your aunt Gabby, she wanted to see a photo of you sitting in the gaming setup. Can we take a photo of it after dinner? Liam's face drops. Zach's face drops. Ben's face drops. They're all like, oh, no, bro. It's over. We're done. <laughs> this is GG Unlucky. We're dead, bro. It's over. And sure enough, right, you know, Liam's like, uh, well, I was thinking of, like, doing stuff with Zach and Ben after dinner, so I might be busy. And, you know, Liam's mom's like, you know, it's only going to take a moment. And also, you know, since we bought you that really expensive gaming setup, is it only fair that we get, like, 30 seconds of a photo with you playing on it? Like, come on, that should only take a little bit of time. And she turns to Zach and Ben, and he's like, she's like, Liam, 
Zach and Ben, I'm sure that you wouldn't mind if we took 30 seconds out of your time with Liam to take a little photo of him on his gaming setup. And Zach and Ben were just staring at her. Because they didn't want to say, yeah, that's totally fine, which would be reasonable, but also reasonable under normal circumstances. And these were not normal circumstances. But, you know, they also didn't want to be like, no, I cannot do that. No, no, that's unacceptable. You can't have 30 seconds with you with your son. You witch, you're the worst. I hate you. They can't pull an Anakin Skywalker right there. I hate you. Anyways, um, so they were like, <laughs> and Liam and Zach and Ben were just looking at each other. And they pull out their phones under the table and they're texting each other. And Liam makes like a group chat that they had, they made before for like, what's the address? What's the time to come over for the sleepover? He's like, boys, what do we do? And they're like, dude, I don't know. I really don't know. So they were like just barely playing with their food. And the mom's like, Liam, but why are you guys not eating it? Because it was actually really good. And Liam's like, I'm eating it. I'm just savoring it. And they're like, yeah, me too. So they keep eating. And they're really just messing with their food to buy them more time to figure out what to do before their mom comes in and is like, oh my God, like all that kind of stuff. And so sure enough, Liam sends a text saying, hey, I I don't think my mom totally remembers what a gaming setup looks like. So maybe we can make a fake one, but I need you guys to go up and come up with something before I will be here with my mom. And Zach and Ben are like, well, I feel like your mom will just like, if we go up, your mom will be like, oh, why don't we just go up now? And Zach's like, hey, I'll stay here. I'll talk to, I'll talk to your mom. How about you and Ben go up and come up with something? And Liam's like, okay, that's fine. So Liam and Ben are like, all right, thank you so much. And Zach's like, oh, Liam's mom. She's like, yes, I have some questions for you. So basically, right, uh, I'm not going to tell the part of the story where, or actually I will. So this is a part where it splits. I'm going to tell Zach's perspective and then Ben's perspective because Ben went upstairs to help Liam make the fake setup and Zach stayed down the stairs to try and buy a bit as much time with Liam's mom as freaking possible. So anyways, uh, Ben and Liam, they run upstairs and Liam's like, dude, I don't even know what this means, but we got to come up with something. And, you know, Zach's like, um, well, okay, well, what do we have around the room? So Liam is like, oh, wait, I still have like parts of my old gaming setup. Like, uh, we got to, like, mix it up with something new because my mom might remember it if it just looks like the old thing. So anyways, Liam gets out his old, like, laptop, you know, he puts it out, and then he decides, okay, we got to make it look like it's something new. So they take out a bunch of markers and pens and, like, all this, like, arts and crafts stuff, and they start, like, decorating it. Like, they start drawing all over it, but they try to make it look as, like, official as possible And they also, like, Liam's like, oh, I think I have, like, some RGB lights or something. So they put that on the computer, right? It looks really scuffed, but, like, when moms aren't going to really know what the new video game tech is going to be, he's like, oh, I need a mouse. He's like, I still have my old one. Takes out his old mouse. It's, like, a white mouse, so they're able to draw all over it and make markings and be like, ooh, this is really the most epic mouse ever. He's like, well, my mom also remembers buying, like, a gaming, like, a, a PC, And she says, she's not going to, if she doesn't see a big box, you know, that's going to be a problem. So Liam looks around and, you know, Liam's like, oh my God, I almost forgot. Liam had like a big black box that he bought something from Amazon or some kind of shipping service. And it came in a black box and like, he just saved the box for some reason. He put the box under his desk and he's like, you know, I, I need to find some kind of like wire type thing. And he goes over to the smashed mouse. He pulls the wire out of the smashed mouse. He puts the wire into this empty black cardboard box and then he like attaches the wire to his computer by just literally putting his his mat who's like old like a I don't know probably was like a chromebook or something on top of like the wire so it looked like it was connected to anyone who has no idea what they're looking at this was like a little bit it was kind of convincing if you had no idea what you're looking at and that's when they heard Liam's mom come up the stairs So anyways, flash forward, like, flash back, like, five minutes. So Liam and Ben, they go up the stairs, and Zach is sitting there at the dinner table trying to figure out a way to stall Liam's mom for as long as humanly possible. So he's like, so tell me about your time on the the parent council for education. Basically, there's, like, a parent, like, little organization that would, like, send suggestions to the school or whatever, and she's like, oh, my God, Zach, you don't want to hear about that. How about we just go upstairs? And he's like, no, 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 I, I do. No, 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 you, you got me all wrong. I, I, I do want to hear about that. I want to hear all about the, 
the, the, the legislation that you do. Um, yeah, tell me about the legislation. I'm really invested in the legislation of parent-teacher. Oh, my God. And she's like, okay, I'll tell you a little bit about it. So after about, like, a minute, she's like, okay, well, that's the gist. Do you want to go up now? And he just knows for a fact. Because, like, Ben basically said, yo, we need time. And he's like, um, so, well, actually, you know, I heard that you were an English major. And she's like, I was an English major. How did you know? And he's like, uh, 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 well, I'm not doing well in my English class. Can you give me some advice? And she's like, you know, Zach, I would be happy to sit down with you in like an hour or so and just go over everything I know about English. And he's like, well, can you give me a quick rundown now? And she's like, you know what? Sure, sure I can. So three to four minutes later, she's done. And she's like, all right, well, I can't wait anymore. I got to see this gaming setup with my little boy in it. So she starts walking up the stairs. And Zach is like, oh, okay, okay, okay. So Zach is like walking up the stairs with her and is like trying to like speak as loud as possible to try and give a little bit of an ad, like an advance to both Ben and Liam so that they could like hear it coming. So anyway, Zach like opens the door and he's like, Zach is terrified because what he sees in front of him is the most ridiculous thing he's ever seen. An old Chromebook with crappy marker all over it. A old mouse with marker on top of it. A cardboard freaking box with a weird wire coming out of it. And, you know, Liam's mom is just speechless for a second. And they're all like, oh no, she doesn't buy it. She doesn't buy it. And she's like, it's beautiful. And they're all like, oh my God. She's like, Liam. Liam, go sit in that chair right now. I'm going to take a photo for your Aunt Gabby. She's going to love it. You know, Liam's mom takes out her, like, her iPad. She's like, say cheese for Facebook. Liam's like, ah, ha, ha. She takes the photo, sends it to Aunt Gabby. She's like, oh, this is so great, Liam. Liam, what's that leaking? And that's when, like, Liam, Zach, and Ben, they all turn to where Liam's mom is pointing out from the closet is a leaking puddle. And Liam, Zach, and Ben realize that the gaming computer that was smashed into a billion pieces and put into the, uh, uh, the, 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 like, the trash bag, the tra- it must, something in there must have ripped the trash bag, and like the, the coolant from the gaming system must be leaking out. And Liam's like, I don't know, Mom. I'll go clean that up. I want to like, play with my friends right now. And she's like, no, let me do it. You guys have fun in your gaming adventures. Walks over, opens up the closet. She's like, Liam, what are these trash bags? And Liam's just like, I don't know, Mom. I'll bring them downstairs. She's like, no, 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 I got it. She opens one up. She opens up another one. She goes in there, starts messing around, starts looking at stuff. She's like, Liam, what is this? And that's when she pulls out a piece a piece of, like, the plastic shell around the gaming computer that had the logo. And since she bought the stuff, she recognized the logo. She's like, Liam? He's like, (laughs) he's like, yes, Mom? She's like, can I have a word with you? Can your little friends leave the room for a second? And and Zach and Ben are just like, oh, no, bro, we're done. And so they get out, and they walk downstairs, and they just hear, Liam! You know how much money I spent on this? This is ridiculous. What did you do? Did you throw it out of a 10-story building? <laughs> and Liam's like, Mom, I'm sorry. Is <laughs> like the craziest freak out ever. And Zach and Ben are just like, <sighs> they're just standing downstairs like, well, we tried, dude. Like, I don't know. Just don't break your $10,000 setup next time, maybe. And so eventually, after 20 minutes, they stop. They, they, the yelling stops. They get a text from Liam saying, hey, I'm so sorry. Like, it's, like, 7, so it's kind of late. But can you ask your parents to come pick you up? Like, my mom just... My mom wants to have a long conversation with me, and I don't think it's going to be fun for you guys to be here. And Lee and Zach and Ben are like, sure. Zach sends a text to his mom, and Zach's mom's like, what did you boys do? And Zach's like, it's not us, actually. We, we were cool. But can you come pick us up? And Zach's mom's like, okay, of course. Like, give me 20 minutes. So after 20, 20 minutes comes by, Zach sends a text to Liam saying, hey, sorry about tonight. Like, we're peacing now. Uh, we'll see you in school tomorrow. Hope that you survive. If you're banned from gaming forever, you can always come over to our houses. We'll let you play. Like, it's all good. So they get in the car. And Zach's mom's like, boys, what happened? And Zach and Ben are like, all right, you're not going to believe this story. Click on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. 
How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today I have two stories for you, the two most spoiled kids I have ever heard of. I know you'll enjoy the story, so sit back, relax, subscribe to the channel, watch this video on Spotify if you want to, link into the description, and let's just jump right into it. So anyways, we're going to call the subscriber who submitted the first story, Chris. So anyways, Chris was in class, and during this class, like, there was a project you had to do, where it's a very common project that you get in school. It's the, what do you want to do when you grow up project. So Chris, at this point in his life, was in third grade, so he was pretty young at this point, and uh, the, he was basically given the week to make a little summary of what he wanted to do, and then at the end of the week on Friday, present it to everyone in the class. There was also a kid in Chris's class who we're just going to call the spoiled kid, and he was kind of known as the spoiled kid because he always just acted very entitled. He always had nice fancy stuff on or always had new clothes or whatever, and uh, most uh, most notably is he always became, like, his dad drove this, like, sports car to come pick him up, which, bro, why are you driving the Lambo to pick your kid up from third grade? But anyways, right, he was kind of known as a spoiled kid, and uh, that's kind of irrelevant for right now because Chris really wanted to be a firefighter at that point in his life, so he went back home, he asked his mom if he, he could go and get, like, a firefighter costume from a Halloween store. They went, they found one, they got it. Chris, like, looked up or asked his mom to help him learn some information about being a firefighter, and he put together a nice little presentation. So now on the day, it is now Friday, it's the day that everyone is presenting, and anyways, right, so, you know, everyone is sitting there, a lot of people are either in costumes, or maybe they're, you know, they have a poster board, Chris happens to be in costume and has a poster board, but you know who doesn't have either, really? Uh, the spoiled kid. The spoiled kid literally has neither. He's just sitting there. And people are kind of looking over like, um, uh, what's going on, bro? Like, why does this kid not have anything? That's kind of crazy. And they're like, I don't know. Or Chris is like, maybe, maybe he has something memorized in his head. Maybe I just can't see what he has to, like, present or whatever. But sure enough. It's time for Chris to go up there. Chris goes up, nails his presentation, says, I want to be a firefighter, says a monster firefighter facts. And sure enough, more people go up. You know, there's doctor, lawyer, uh, astronaut, uh, chemist, mad scientist, SpongeBob SquarePants. There's a lot of professions that people go up and say that they want to do. And that's when it's time for the spoiled kid. So the teacher's going down the list and reading out names. It's like, all right, spoiled kid, it is your time to go up. And the spoiled kid is like, he looks up, he's like, ah, whatever, and he walks up to the front of the class, and he said, when I am older, I want to be rich. And everyone was kind of sitting there like, okay. And the teacher was kind of looking at him like, and? And? And the spoiled kid's like, that's it, that's my presentation. And the teacher's like, like wait a second, spoiled kid, are you telling me that the only thing that you did was say that, like, I want to be rich and you're done with it. Like, that's all you did? And the, and the spoiled kid's like, well, yeah. And the teacher's like, okay, well, okay. Because, you know, at this point, they didn't really have grades. They got, like, a check plus or a check minus or something. But it really didn't affect them at this point. They were only in third grade. So the teacher wasn't like, I'm going to fail you. But the teacher's like, uh, well, maybe you can add a little bit more on the spot. And the spoiled kid's like, well, I want to be wealthy too <laughs> which like bro rich and wealthy is basically the same thing in a sense and the teachers knows like no 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 what are you gonna do to become rich the spoiled kid's like um I i'm just gonna become rich and at this point the teacher's like w what do you mean and the spoiled kid like is like well some people when they're born they're just like born like better than other people and they're did they just become rich and the teacher's like, spoiled kid, like, people aren't born better than other people, everyone is born the same at birth, like, that's ridiculous. And the spoiled kid's like, well, well then why, like, why do I have all this cool stuff in my house, and when I go to other people's houses, they don't have that cool stuff. Remember, bro was in third grade, but still, like, what? Uh, I mean, the thing is, bro, this is definitely the parents coming in and telling some, like, some, some kind of, like, brainwashing right here. And the teacher's like, spoiled kid, like, that is super disrespectful. Like, everyone has different opportunities and disadvantages in their lives just because, like, your parents were able to, like, you know, I'm sure that they worked very hard, but there's also a bit of luck involved in that. Like, 
you got to be great. Like you got to be grateful for all that. You can't just say that you got that because you deserve it. Like you were just happened to be born from them. And spoiled kids like, well, I don't understand. Like I thought the way the world worked was like, if you are rich, that just meant you were better. And poor people are poor because they're worse. And the teacher is just staring at the spoiled kid with his mouth, with his mouth like wide open. And everyone else in class is like kind of turning around and like talking to each other like, Dude, what? What did this kid just say? Did he just say I was worse because my parents make less? He said I, I'm inherently worth like worse less. Like what? And the spoiled kid said, Yeah, like what? And he said also, What does like job have to do with money? And he's like, Isn't it just like the poor people have jobs and then you know the better people, aka rich people, just they they're they're just able to sit there? And, and the teacher's like, No, like you make money from your jobs. And the spoiled kid's like, Oh. Okay, well then, I want to be really rich when I grow up. And the teacher's like, spoiled kid, you don't understand. Like, you were put in a fortunate position where your parents have done well. Like, that's awesome. That's great. Whatever, right? But that's not a job. Just having money is not a job. That's not how this works. And everyone could kind of tell that the teacher was starting to get a little bit upset because, look... Being a teacher is a thankless profession, right? You have a lot of snotty kids in your class that don't care what you're doing. You also don't get paid at all. Most people, most of the time, teachers are doing it because they believe that their work is important, you know, teaching the next generation of kids. And that is really the only way they get paid in gratitude or not gratitude, but just like knowing they're doing something important. So this teacher was a little mad that this kid, the spoiled kid, was basically like, well, I plan to do nothing and be really lame when I grow up. Like, I'm just going to sit there and, you know, fiend off all the money I'm going to get in my inheritance. Basically what this kid was saying. So when you're, anyways, right, the spoiled kid is like, I don't, I don't understand. And, you know, the teacher's like, okay, pick a profession, spoiled kid. Pick a profession. And the spoiled kid is starting to get angry himself. He's like, I just want to be rich. I don't care what you're saying. And the teacher is like, that's not a profession. Choose a job. What do you want to do? And this is when the spoiled kid says, Daddy says, I don't need a job because he's so rich, he'll pay for everything I ever want. And that's when everyone in the class is like, hey, yo, bro, what? Huh? And sure enough, right, the teacher is like starting to get a little upset as well. And the teacher's like, you know what? Let's pretend you had to contribute to society in some way. Let's pretend. So, I mean, look, it's a grown adult fighting with a little kid. So I don't know if anyone's really the person in the right here. I don't think the kid's saying that, like, everyone is inherently worse than him because his parents have money is in the right. But I also don't think an adult fighting with a kid's in the right either. But anyways, right, you know, so it's a heated match. And uh, Chris is just sitting there very awkwardly, very uncomfortable, and that's when the spoiled kid starts to, like, he basically loses it. He starts saying, just because you poor, broke individuals with no money, like, are mad at me and are jealous for what I earned. I earned, bro. Congrats on being the right sperm that went to the right cell. Like, congrats. I don't know. Like, what are you saying? But anyways, he's like, you guys are all so jealous. I can smell the jealousy from here. Oh, man, it reeks of jealousy because you guys are all jealous and haters. I hate how hatery you guys are. You're all jealous and you suck and because you're poor and broke and lame. And the kid literally runs out of the classroom. And he just like, at this point, right, the teacher's like, oh, my God, like, what am I going to do? Like, and the teacher's like, okay, class, like, please ignore what just happened. Uh, let's continue on. And basically what happens, the spoiled kid ran out, went to his backpack. They have to keep their backpacks outside. They go out and they grab their books or whatever. And he grabs his, like, portable phone. He dials up, the like, the number for his dad. And within 30 minutes, his dad arrives at the school. And so anyways, you know, Chris is in class. He's in there finishing up their presentations when the spoiled kid and the spoiled kid's dad barge through the door. And the spoiled kid's dad is like, looks at the teacher and says, my son says that you were shaming him for us being successful. Like, is this true? And the teacher said, today was supposed to be career day. Your son went up there and just said, you know, I want to be rich. So I kind of just pressed him and asked him, okay, well, what career path do you want to do to obtain such status and wealth, right? And he said that, you know, he's going to be rich because he deserves it. We're poor because we're, you know, we don't deserve it. And that like, you're going to basically pay for everything that he ever wants and that he doesn't need a job. And his dad says, and you got mad at my son for saying that? 
That's exactly what's happening. That's exactly true. And the teacher's like, wait, so you believe that, like, the reason why some people are poor and some people are rich is that they're just born as worse off, like, they're not as good of a person? And his dad, and the spoiled kid's dad is like, yeah, that's exactly what I think. And he looks down at his son and he says, you know what, son? Good for you. You're taking off, you're taking on, like, your old dad. Like, you know what? Let's go home. I'm going to take you out for ice cream. The spoiled kid's like, yay, ice cream. And the kid and the, and the father walk off. This is kind of a sad story because, look, at the end of the day, a lot of times views and opinions of kids are really just formed from their environment. And a lot of times parents are like the major, are kind of like the main factor in determining what that environment will be. So this is kind of an unfortunate story, but it is what it is. And yeah, so Chris, like, remember, this happened a long time ago for Chris, and uh, Chris was, this kid kind of a little bit grew out of it. He was always kind of been spoiled and entitled, even as he got older, but he wasn't as bad as this. For the next spoiled kid story, we're going to call the subscriber Clarence. So anyways, Clarence was at a restaurant, and it was a bit of a fancier restaurant. It wasn't like drive through McDonald's or something. It was a bit of a fancier sit-down restaurant, and Clarence and his parents sat down next to another table that probably just got there a couple minutes before them. It was a mom, a dad, and a son. This son was probably in, like, he was on the younger side. He might have been the fourth or fifth grade or something. But this son, we're just going to call the spoiled kid because, oh, my God, he was the spoiled kid, right? So first of all, Clarence was watching, and, you know, Clarence's parents said, hey, no phones, no iPads, no devices or anything at the table. When you're sitting at the table, please pay attention to, like, your other, the other people there. Like, your comp it's important to, like, maintain conversations. And I think that's a good thing, personally. I try and obtain, like, uphold that as much as I possibly can. But anyways, right, Clarence was looking over, and there was a kid, the spoiled kid, had his big old iPad, and he was just on it, and he had the iPad on the table. And Clarence saw the spoiled kid's mom be like, so, spoiled kid, how was school today? And the spoiled kid's like, shut up, mom, I'm watching Minions. And he sits on his iPad. And, you know, the spoiled kid's dad is like, son, it's not polite to talk to your mother like that. He's like, shut up, dad, I'm on my iPad watching Minions. And this point, <laughs> at this point, like, Clarence is like, wow, this kid's like a real jerk, like, bro. Look, your parents, first of all, they're the ones who raise you, you know, they put a house under your head, under your head, over your head, they gave you that iPad, you've done none of this before, yes, you know, they brought you into this world, so, you know, you're entitled to a little bit, but come on now, have a little bit of respect when everything you have in life is because of them, don't be like, bro, I'm watching Minions, I'm too busy, like, get out of here with that, get out of here with that, that's ridiculous, and sure enough, right, you know, Clarence watches as this kid is like, shut up, mom, I'm watching Minions, I'm gonna be in my iPad. And so sure enough, right, his, the spoiled kid's parents kind of give up, which, look, if I'm gonna be a parent, I'm not giving up, I'm not tolerating disrespect like that. But anyways, right, so sure enough, you know, this kid is on his iPad, and he says he doesn't have the volume down low. He literally has the volume cranked up to the maximum, yes. This was a restaurant with a lot of people. There was noise. There was ambiance. But within that ambiance, you could hear Minion Rush gameplay. It was the loudest thing in the room. And the thing is, right, maybe the person sitting at the end, like, a very far away, couldn't hear, like, the Minion Rush in the background from this iPad. But since Clarence and his family were sitting right next to them, like, their conversation was being drowned out by Minion sounds. Like, from the movie, he's like, oh my god. And the thing is, right, this spoiled kid, you might be thinking, wow, this kid's disrespecting his parents, and he's on his iPad being super loud. He, this must be the worst he gets. No, trust me. He gets so much worse. Real quick, comment spoiled if you made it this far into the video. I really would appreciate it just to see who made it this far. Also, if you want to support the channel, literally just continue watching these videos. I keep on seeing comments from people saying, I've watched five videos today. I've watched 20 videos this week. I just want to let you know that when I see those comments, I try and heart them as much as I can. And even if I don't, just know I really appreciate it because watching a bunch of videos is what is helping the channel get promoted as much as it is. So I really, really, really do appreciate it. And also, yes, we are on Spotify. It is linked in the description. But also, if you look up Connor Pugs, it'll be the only Connor Pugs podcast, I do believe. And you can watch these videos on the go or whatever, right? And also, don't forget to use code CONNORPUGS on GamerSubs for 10% off. It helps me. 
It helps you. You'll love to see it. And finally, finally, if you want to submit your own stories, these are subscriber submitted stories, go to my Instagram account, Connor Pugs. It's also in the description. Follow me and then DM me your stories. And don't say, oh, I have a story. Do you want to hear it? Just DM me the stories. A lot of times, even if I use the stories, I won't even respond just in case I change my mind a little bit later. So always be checking in with the videos to see if your story was used. And also, if I do use your story, there's a good chance I alter most of the details just to make sure that it doesn't get back to the person and you get in trouble. And also just keeping it good like that. Anyways, let's get back to it. So sure enough, Clarence is listening over. And the other table with the spoiled kid, they get their food, right? Like food was given out, like handed over. And, uh, you know, on this like dish or whatever, there was a, like a main course and then there was like vegetables. And the thing is, right, I get it. If you don't like your vegetables, you don't like your vegetables. There's not a lot that I can do about it personally. I think you should eat your vegetables. I think that it's important to eat your greens. However, if you don't, Whatever, man. I'm not in charge of you. However, what you should not be doing is taking your broccoli and thum, floor, throwing it across the room to random people. That's not what you should be doing, to say the least, right? So anyways, this, you know, Clarence is sitting there, and he's not even looking at the spoiled kid's table when he feels something hit his face. And he looks down at the table, and there's a piece of broccoli on the frickin' table, bro. There's a piece of broccoli on the table. And sure enough, right, you know, he looks over and the spoiled kid is picking up the broccoli on his plate and chucking it across the room. Boom, boom, just like throwing it across the place, hitting other people. They're looking over and the spoiled kid's mom is like, like, spoiled kid, don't throw your food. Don't like this is not a food fight. Like, have some respect. And the spoiled kid's like, shut up, mom. I'm going to do whatever I want. And at this point, right, you know, Clarence is looking over. He's like, wow. Like, this is kind of disrespectful. This is kind of, like, not a great thing. And sure enough, the spoiled kid can continues to just take fistfuls of broccoli and peas and just throwing them all around the place. And the thing is, no one at, this, or no one at, the, uh, at the restaurant who works there noticed this because I'm pretty sure they'd come over and ask him to stop. I mean, I don't know. Maybe they think it's such a great thing. They say, oh, sir, thank you so much for chucking your mushed up vegetables in your hand all across, all over the place. Thank you so much. You're so valuable to our customer service. You add to our atmosphere with all the vegetables flying around. Like, no, dude, like no one actually wants that. But this is not as bad as the spoiled kid gets. Because the next thing he does is finally, right, he gets bored. He eats like a little bit off his plate. And then he leaves the table and the spoiled kid's dad is like, spoiled kid, get back here, sit down. We're going to have a nice conversation. He's like, no, shut up, dad. <laughs> he just kind of just starts walking around. And that's when Clarence watches as the spoiled kid approaches his table. And Clarence is like, oh, my God, like what's going on here? And Clarence had like a big thing of fries because he got steak and he got steak with fries on the side. And he sees the spoiled kid look over, come over to the table. And Clarence and his parents are like, hello there. Spoiled kid is like, hello. And he literally takes his big greasy palms and grabs a handful of fries and runs away. And Clarence is like, hey, like, whoa, bro, like, come back. And the thing is, right, he took like three fourths of the fries. He took most of Clarence's fries. And at this restaurant, the fries were like the greatest fries around. Clarence has been thinking about these fries for weeks. Okay, maybe that's an exaggeration, but you know what I mean. The fries are good. So Clarence is upset, and he starts looking over, and he sees the spoiled kid is going table to table, literally taking people's stuff. He's going from table to the next table to the next table to the next table, literally just nabbing stuff from people. And people are like, hey, like, what's going on here? And that's when someone gets up and talks to a manager of the restaurant, pointing at the spoiled kid. And Clarence watches as the manager is, like, looking over. The person complaining is pointing at the spoiled kid and shows the spoiled kid going from table to table, like, grabbing stuff. And that's when the manager walks over to the spoiled kid's parents and says, hey, guys, you got to control your kid. And they're like, hey, well, like, we've been trying to. He's been so bad. And the manager's like, I, like I, 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 and I mean no disrespect or anything, but if you can't control him, I'm going to I'm gonna have to ask all of you to leave. And the thing is, the spoiled kid heard this, and the spoiled kid is like, you can't tell me to do anything. And the manager is like, I'm the manager of this restaurant. If you, don't ke if you continue to take stuff from people and you don't sit down and eat the dinner like everyone else with your parents, 
I'm going to have to ask you all to leave. I think it's a pretty fair request. And the spoiled kid gets super angry. He's like, you can't tell me what to do. So the spoiled kid runs away, right? And his parents are like, I'm so sorry. I'll go get him. However, they're not expecting what's about to happen next. And what's about to happen next is that the spoiled kid, bro, the spoiled kid starts running around and like he takes a, like one of the salt and pepper shakers and chucks it through the window. And the window apparently was like, it was like one of those like glass panel things. It wasn't like a big thick window. It goes right through the glass panel, shatters. And the glass shattering noise is enough to get everyone's attention in the restaurant. So they all turn their heads and they're looking over and they're just like, uh, like what's going on here? And everyone turns and they look at the spoiled kid. And the spoiled kid is literally just standing there. Like he is just standing there watching everyone watch him. And he's next to a big thing of broken glass. And the manager angrily turns to his parents and is like, if you don't control your kid and get him out of here, I'm going to call the police to do that for them. And the parents are like, he's just a kid. Why would you call the police? Shattered glass noise number two. And they look over and they see the spoiled kid has taken a stool and thrown it through a normal glass window, which is insane, right? And they're like, okay, point proven. So the two, so the two parents run over to the spoiled kid and are like, sweetie, we need to go home. And the spoiled kid's like, no, mom and dad, I do what I want because I can do anything. This is my world. And he literally just continues. He takes another chair and his dad is like, spoiled kid. If we go back home, we can get ice cream. And spoiled kid's like, of course we're getting ice cream when we go home. When you take me home, I'm going to get ice cream no matter what. But I want to keep doing what I'm doing right now. So at this point, right, uh, you know, Clarence looks over and sees the manager literally going over and, like, calling the police at this point. He sees the manager being like, ah, nah, bro, this is not happening. Not in my restaurant. And so sure enough, right, you know, he calls the police and at this point, the spoiled kid and his parents are like, okay, come on, spoiled kid. And the spoiled kid's like, not today. And he takes his, like, takes another, like, chair, throws it through another window. At this point, right, a lot of people are getting up to leave because this is ridiculous. And sure enough, right, the police do arrive. And the spoiled kid doesn't see the police. And he picks up another chair when he feels a bit of resistance. Like, there's someone else tugging on the chair. So the spoiled kid thinks it's his dad. He's like, don't try and stop me, dad. And he turns around and he's looking directly at an officer who he's holding onto the chair. And he's like, oh, oh my God. He drops the chair and he runs away, but he runs over to the exit, which is the door. And who do you think is standing in the door? Another officer. And he starts crying. He's like, it wasn't me. It was my parents and that kid. And he points over to Clarence, the subscriber. And Clarence is like, bro, What? You took fries from me and now you're blaming me for causing damages at a restaurant. Anyways, police officers are told by the, like the, the manager, no, it was this kid. And so anyways, police officers, the manager, the parents, and this kid are all standing around. And they're basically just talking about damages, like how it's going to be settled, how all of that. Basically, the restaurant is, one, banning them from ever coming back, and two, sending them a bill for, uh, you know, the damages done to the window. And the cops basically say, like, hey, like, you know, the manager said that, you know, he's not going to press any charges or have any police action against your son. So he won't be going to juvie or anything like that or be on watch or something. But, like, you need to be a better parent. And they're like, I know. And with that, they left. And, like, basically most people at this point had left. Clarence and his parents had finished eating. They were paying the check. And Clarence just looked over. And man, bro, bro just saw like a massive, like, he just saw a massive pile of glass, bro. He just saw a massive pile of glass. And uh, yeah, you know, the moral of the story is if you're a parent, like sometimes you got to be forceful. Some, I mean, not physically, but sometimes you got to put your foot down and not let your kid run you because they'll turn into something like that. Anyways, if you want to support the channel, go ahead and watch another video after, after click this Click on the video one. on Thank screen you, right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it, do it.
How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today we get a story of a spoiled kid who burns down a restaurant because he is big mad. Uh, yeah, it is a very interesting story. I'll know you, you'll enjoy it, so sit back, relax, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and let's call the subscriber who submitted this story, Alex. By the way, this story is also on Spotify. It's the first link in the description. Please rate it five stars if you do listen to the podcast on there. It's these stories, but you also get the stories like a couple hours early if you follow on Spotify. Anyways, so Alex was going on a date, right? And you know, Alex hadn't been going, had not had a date for a while. She just didn't really have the best luck when it came to this stuff. But all of a sudden she was just like on Tinder or Match or one of those dating apps. And she got like, you know, she matched with this guy who we're gonna call Steve. And Alex right away was pretty excited because you know, Steve wasn't a bad looking guy. He seemed like, I don't know, he had good photos with friends, a photo with his mom. He kind of seemed like a nice, wholesome, and somewhat attractive guy. So Alex was pretty excited for all this. Alex and Steve talked a little bit in the Tinder DM section, and, you know, she was all like, oh, like, do you want to, or he said, do you want to go out tonight? And she didn't have anything to do, and she hadn't been on a date in a while. So Alex, you know, very excitedly and enthusiastically said, yeah, yeah, I would like to go on a date. That sounds great. And, you know, Alex is like, hey, or Steve is like, hey, you should come to the blah, blah, blah restaurant on like Fifth Avenue or something like that. And it was like a really fancy restaurant. And, you know, Alex was like, oh, wow, I guess this guy's kind of a baller too. Like, all right, like W for Alex, love to see it. So Alex, you know, getting ready and she's excited and she's still chatting with Steve a little bit, just like flirting it up a little bit. And this guy actually has some pretty good game. He's, you know, he seems like a nice guy, not, not like r slash nice guys, fedora wear nice guy, but like an actual nice, like a nice dude who like she's excited to go on a date with who's pretty good looking and probably making that bread by the, by the restaurant suggestion, you know? And, uh, you know, Alex is like, okay, like this is pretty great. And she gets all ready, she's excited, and she shows up to the restaurant, and she shows up like 10 minutes early, because they have like a reservation. She's like, I just want to be there first so that like, you know, I can see him coming and I don't get caught off guard or anything. Like, I just want to be there prepared. So Alex says, gets there like 10 minutes early, goes up to the front desk, and is like, hey, like uh, a reservation for Steve, I think, and or Steve for two and she looks down she said yeah okay come right this way the table's ready so the waiter leads Alex over to the table it's you know it's a table with a view of like really like the city that they're in wherever that may be not going to disclose anything and it's really beautiful and she's like wow this is awesome so she sits down and it's a, it's a restaurant with a lot of other people but it's a pretty fancy restaurant Alex got dressed up in like a nice dress and all that good stuff and sure enough She's sitting around, waiting. She looks at her phone, and it, it's 6 o'clock. It's the time that he's supposed to be there, that they were supposed to meet. And Alex is, like, looking at it, and 6.01, she's like, okay, whatever. No big deal. Like, that's totally fine. Like, okay, that's, that's chill. We're, we're, we're cool. We're cool. And it's 6.05. She's like, ah, you know, good to be uh, fashionably late, I guess. I guess. 6.10, and she's like, oh no, like, I definitely just got stood up. And Alex is, like, so upset about it, so disappointed. And that's when this guy comes, like, strutting, strut, strutting in at 6.12 and sits down. He's like, hey, Alex, right? It's Steve. What's good? And Steve was all, like, disheveled looking. He was, like, I mean, he was all dressed up in a fancy suit, but it was, like, thrown on last minute. His hair was all around the place. Like, his shirt was unbuttoned a little bit too much. It was all ruffled up. He kind of smelled a little musty from even even far away. He had, like, you know, a 12 o'clock shadow. Like, it, it was just, like, she was like, oh, in her head. She's like, ah looks a little different in his photos, doesn't he? <laughs> you should always FaceTime someone on, like, if, if you match with someone on Tinder, try and get them on a FaceTime call before you meet them in person just to make sure you're getting the real deal. little pro tip from me. So anyways, Steve's like, oh, yeah, no, you'll love this place. Like, it's so good. Like, my dad brings me here all the time. I go here with the boys. It's awesome. And Alex is like, Haha, he also sounds different over text. The way I imagined him to be was a little bit more Prince Charming-y. I guess that's on me. And, you know, Steve's like, yeah, so, yeah, I'll probably just get, like, the flight. Like, you can get whatever I want. It's, it's on my dad's card, so it really doesn't matter. Get what you want. And Alex is like, Ah, uh, so he's not a baller. He just has infinite resources at his disposal. 
because he won the genetic lottery. Okay, good to know. This this is not turning out exactly how I thought it would. And so anyways, like Steve is like, uh, yeah, all this looks bad. So many vegetables. Alex, being a vegetarian, is like, yeah, isn't that the worst? <laughs> so right away, this is already a disaster of a date because she thought that she was going on you know, a date with Prince Charming, but instead she's going on a date with basically spoiled kid grown up. I've told a lot of stories of spoiled kids when they're like in elementary school or grade school. This is the spoiled kid, but like when he's 22, bro. Like, this is the spoiled kid if he grows up. So think of this as, like, the prequels to my spoiled kid story times. Let me know if you like these kind of older ones, too, and I'll, I'll make sure to do some of them. But anyways, right, so Alex is like, okay, just survive the date. He's paying for it. You know, get a nice meal. Maybe dig down deep, and you'll find this guy's actually cool. But worst comes to worst, you get a good meal, and then you leave. However, that was not worst comes to worst, because the worst comes to worst was the title of this video, which you, you'll see in just a second. So, the, spo so the, the waiter comes over, and the spoiled kid is like, yeah, I want this. And she's like, okay, like, that's, that's totally fine. Alex says, like, oh, I want that. And Steve's like, dude, that's the lamest thing on the menu, because Alex got some, like, she's a vegetarian. She got, like, the vegetable option. And Alex kind of just looks at Steve. He's like, oh, my, oh, my fault. Don't sweat it. Like, don't take it personally. I just, like, I'm always joshing around, bro. Like, don't even worry about it. Alex is like, yeah, no, I'll have the... Uh, I'll have the vegetable bake. That sounds good. And Steve's like, <laughs> vegetables. <laughs> and Alex is like, okay, just gonna go through this. It's fine. Life is okay. And see, so the waiter goes away and Steve's like, so you want to hear about my vacation? Alex is like, uh -uh. in her head, she's like, okay, so this is normally when we talk. We just ask each other a little bit more about e each other, right? We just talk a little bit more. We get to know each other. It's a back and forth, but Sure, I want to hear about your vacation. So Spoiled Kid, or a.k.a. Steve, is like, yeah, so I was vacationing with uh, my parents. We took, a, or with my, uh, with my dad. We took a, a little uh, mega super yacht over to Mykonos. It was pretty fire. And we went, we went clubbing every single night. And dude, Alex, you're not going to believe it. I got with so many beautiful women. And Alex is like, red flag, red flag, red flag, red flag, red flag. So, right, she's sitting there, and her date is saying, yo, I'm getting, I got with all these beautiful women. I just want to make sure that you are aware of that. Like, bro, I, I don't, <laughs> I don't think that's the thing you say to your date. But okay, anyways, and he's like, yeah. And I went back home. I went to the club again, like my dad, you know, he just gives me his like, his like, uh, you know, the, the Centurion card from American Express. So, it, you know, that thing's like metal and he takes it out and he kind of like dinks it and glints his glass. He goes, bing, bing, bing. He's like, yeah, dude, like this thing is crazy. You just go to a club and you drop it down and they'll give you anything. Like I, I got the craziest bottles of champagne ever. And like I was spraying them over these girls and they were, and Alex is like, okay, just zone out because <laughs> this is not not going as i expected and he's like so and steve then goes so so alex tell me about yourself like what's up and she's like oh uh, um because he'd been sp speaking about his like super crazy mega yacht vacation for like the last 10 minutes and alex is like oh yeah so you know i work at a, a coffee shop i'm a vegetarian i love cats and you can just see that Steve is completely glazed out. He's not paying attention to a thing. And that's when Steve takes out his phone and doesn't, like, discreetly check it. Because, look, if you're discreetly on your phone taking a little look while someone's talking to you, yeah, you should be pretty good friends with them and you should make it brief because, you know, good to have eye contact, human conversation, human, co like, human connection is important in these things. But like this, like this guy was just like had the phone on the table, was scrolling through like Instagram, right? And, and the thing was, in the middle of Alex speaking, literally, bro, he go he goes on TikTok and is listening to TikToks, bro. He just is like it's like renegade, run. And while she's trying to talk, and uh, one of the times the TikTok comes up, she's explaining to him like, "Oh, this is what I do for work," and he goes like. <laughs> He's like the worst freaking laugh ever. This kid has like, you know, he might have been blessed with a ton of money, but he was cursed with a terrible laugh and a really loud one too. 
And Alex just kind of stops talking because, bro, this kid is on TikTok. He sounds something funny and he bursts out laughing when she's explaining, yeah, ever since my mother died, he's like, <laughs> it's just the worst timing ever. She's like, you know what? You know what? No, I'm not going to continue this conversation. I'm speaking to a brick wall right now. So she kind of stops talking. Steve's like, wait, why'd you stop? And Alex is like, oh, I was just catching my breath. So she continues to go on. She's like, and so the other thing. <laughs> and she's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. This is the worst date I have ever been on. And that's when it gets somehow, it, it somehow gets worse. Like, you have to realize this date sounds terrible so far, but it only continues to get worse. Because Steve is like, hey, can I tell you a secret? She's like, yeah. Steve's like, yo, turn around, but be discreet. And so Alex turns around and she sees, you know, this, like, this girl and this guy sitting at another table. She's like, okay. And Alex is like, yo, that's my ex. We broke off, like, a, and, like 12 hours ago. And Alex is like, you broke up with your ex 12 hours ago? And she's sitting right there? And Steve's like, yeah, like, I was doing some snooping, and I figured out that she was coming on. She was coming here tonight with a new date, and I just had to book it with a date. And Alex at this point is like, wait a minute. I'm just being set up. I'm just being used at this point to try and make this other girl jealous. So Alex just looks at him. It's like, Steve. He's like, yeah, what's good? What's up? He's like, do you just bring me here to make another girl jealous? Steve's like, uh, I mean, like, no. I want to go on a date with you. It just happened that my ex-girlfriend from 12 hours ago, who I was stalking and figured out that she would be here at this exact time in this exact restaurant uh and i just happened to be here with my new girlfriend uh and she's like girlfriend uh, uh, no it's a coincidence alex i just want to go on a date with you like can you just get over the fact that like my ex is here wow you're so jealous and alex is like i don't care it just seems a little weird that like you planned this out he's like no it's a total coincidence even though he literally just admitted to it not being a coincidence but anyways, Alex is like, okay, this food is taking forever. I wish this was fast food so I could eat my meal and go. And as she was saying that, the waiter comes over with uh, both the meals. And Alex got, like, the meat lover's dead animal surprise or whatever. And she got the vegetable loaf. So she was kind of just looking at him like, mm, mm, mm. But sure enough, right, she was eating it. And Alex was like, so, like, do you want to try some? And he, like pushes over his big meat lover surprise. And she's like, yeah, I'm a vegetarian, which she said like seven times. Like she said it while she was ordering. She explained like what in her life brought her to that point. Cause like she had to explain like stuff about her life. And he's like, oh, well, I mean, you're still a vegetarian if you eat a little bit of meat. And Alex is like, no, it's, that's not how it works. At least, at least not for me. And he's like, come on, just have a little bite. And Alex takes up, like, takes a fork, sticks it into, like, a piece of steak, starts, like, pushing it in her face. She's like, please get that away from me. Please. Like, please. And, and he's like, what? I, I, are you a snowflake? Is this meat making you triggered? <laughs> She's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This guy's literally the worst. And then Alex is like, okay, I'm bored with you. Or not, yeah, it's Alex, it's Steve. And Steve's so like, hey, Kate. And Kate's the ex-girlfriend at the other table. And Kate whips her head around. She's like, what is it, Al What is it, Steve? And at this point, right, Steve and Kate, Steve's ex-girlfriend, are just bickering back and forth. And he's like, oh, look, he's on a new date now, Kate. Like, does this make you jealous? And Kate's like, I don't know if you remembered, but I broke up with you and I'm on a date. You happen to stalk me figure out exactly when I'm coming, and just pick up some random girl on Tinder to be your quote-unquote date. And, you know, at this point, like, Steve is like, N -uh. that's that's, like, totally not how it went. You're just, like, making stuff up right now. It's so embarrassing for you. It's so embarrassed. I I'm embarrassed on your behalf. At this point, like, St <laughs> Steve is like, tears are welling up in his eyes. It's like, when your younger brother loses the, it loses the fight. So he's like, no, you're wrong. And he cries and goes to his room. Mom, he's hitting me. I don't even have a younger brother, but I've just seen that happen so often. And sure enough, right, you know, Alex is just sitting there and is like, okay, this is not how I was envisioning my night. Because remember, 
she saw this guy on Tinder with wonderful photos and, uh, you know, he was eloquent, eloquent in his, you know, his responses. He was, you know, he was so good. And then from those little bits, you know, she kind of imagined a totally different guy. I mean, by totally different, I kind of just mean that one is who isn't terrible, right? But Alex thinks that the date right now is going bad. She's not a fan of how it's going. However, little does she know, it's about to get a lot worse. Real quick, comment spoiled down below if you made it this far into the video. Uh, the secret word of the day is spoiled. I'll try and hard a bunch of comments to say spoiled down below. And also, if you want to support the channel, all you got to do is make sure to continue watching videos after this one, or at some point within the day, just sit down and watch a bunch of videos. Please let me know in the comment section down below what you're doing while watching these videos and or how many videos you watched today. I am genuinely curious. Also, I made a Twitter account and something very cool can happen, but we need to get to a thousand followers. So my Twitter is Connor Pugs. It's in the description. It has like 200 followers right now. I would love to get it to a thousand. Also, if you enjoy watching these or listening to these on the go, Please check out the Spotify, as on Spotify, you'll actually get access to these story times two, one to two hours before they go up on a lot of occasions. Not always, but if you want kind of like a sneak peek of the stories, go to Spotify, follow, turn on notifications, and rate five stars if you can. And finally, if you want to submit stories, and very soon, like right now, go to my Instagram, Connor Pugs, and DM me. Or go to my Twitter. I'm going to be opening up my DMs pretty soon, and you can DM me stories on there as well. Anyways, let's just get back to it. Use code as Connor Pugs for 10% off Gamer Subs. Link in the description. Helps you out, helps me out. Let's just get back to the crazy date, because this is really bad. So Alex is sitting there. At this point, Steve and his ex, Kate, are just, like, bickering back and forth. And Alex kind of looks at, the like, the guy that, you know, Kate is on, like, a, a date with as well, and... They kind of look at each other and kind of shrug and be like, what's going on? Like, I'm, hey, man, you and I, you and I are both in this together, bro. Like, this is crazy. And so sure enough, right, what probably happened was that, like, Kate was angry about the breakup and spiteful and just found a random dude on Tinder and decided to go out and also made it very clear to, like, Steve that she was going out with, like, a random dude to a restaurant. And, like, she probably put it on her story, like, just made a gr met a great guy on Tinder. We're going to the 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 rich minion, <laughs> the rich minion restaurant at six tonight. It's gonna be so great. Um, I don't think there's a restaurant called Rich Minion. If there was, I would be there immediately. I also saw disp I also saw saw Minions two in the movie theater. Ten out of ten would recommend. <laughs> I'm not even joking. I, I unironically love that stuff. Anyways, though, so you know, at this point, Steve. He's starting to get really, really angry. He's like, I don't like you at all, Kate. And she's like, good. That's why I'm going on a date with another person. And they're basically shouting back and forth. And, you know, the manager comes over and he's like, hello, everybody. My name is Markable. I'm just kidding. He's like, hello, everybody. Uh, what's going on over here? Like, uh, can we please, you know, I I'm glad that everyone around here is such good friends and is having a great conversation with each other. But can we please quiet it down a little bit? Just a little bit, please? Just a little bit? <laughs> and the manager walks away. At this point, Steve and Kate turn back to their people. Or Steve turns back to Alex. Kate turns back to her Tinder date. And they're sitting there. And Alex is just looking at Steve. And she's like, so, that was something. And Steve's like, yeah, my ex is the worst. She keeps following me around and is trying to make me jealous. And Kate's like, well, I mean... Uh, can you be jealous? Like, I mean, you guys broke up. Are you still into her? He's like, <laughs> maybe. And Kate's like, okay, I, I don't think we should be on a date anymore. He's like, wait, you're not break. No, 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 no. You're not allowed to break up with me too. You can't break up with me as well. And Alex is like, what are you saying? What? No. Um, well, what do you mean break up with you? He's like, Nobody wants to stay with me. They all leave. And Alex is like, calm down, calm down. Okay, uh, I'm not going to go anywhere. And immediately Steve like goes back to like, good, perfect. Like he, like the tears literally went back up into the tear ducts. It was crazy. Okay, not, not actually, but you know what I mean. And sure enough, right, Alex is like, okay, he's obviously manipulating me. But you know what? I'm going to get dessert here. It's on his dad's dime. So I'm getting dessert here. 
Like, I don't care. Like, that's totally fine. So they get the dessert menu, and, you know, they order something, and, you know, Steve is sitting there, <laughs> and Steve is just, like, completely disinterested in Alex. Like, literally, he's just paying no attention to her. And Alex finds that kind of annoying. You know, he, he like, Steve is uh, just looking over at Kate, talking with her new boyfriend, and Kate turns around, sees that Steve is looking at her, and she, like, puts her hand on her new Tinder date's boyfriend hand. Tinder date's boyfriend. Her, her new boyfriend, the Tinder date's hand. There we go. And see, Al, Steve literally takes his fist and pounds it on the table. And when he does this, the glass of red wine that Alex ordered falls over and spills on her. And she's like, oh my god. Steve looks over and it's like, my fault. And then turns back to looking at Kate. Bro, and Alex is like, a- anything? Do you want to say anything else? Do you want to offer to help or something? And Steve's like, what? You just spilled wine all over yourself. And she's like, oh my god. She's like, no. It was on the table. You pounded your fist because you're mad that Kate is with another guy. And it spilled all over me, right? And so Kate grabs a napkin. And, you know, Steve is like, I'm not mad. No, you got that wrong. I don't care that Kate's with another guy. I mean, we broke up. It was mutual. Oh, no, no, no. She's broke. I'm up. Oh, roast. And Kate's like, dude, or uh, Alex is like, dude, that wasn't like a roast. You didn't. He's like, silence. He's like, no, I don't care that Kate's with another guy. I don't care at all. I'm a big boy. It's what my dad said. Love you, daddy. But no, 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 no. I'm good. I'm fine. I don't care. I don't care. Okay, I care a little bit, but not, like, enough that anyone would be... And Alex is like, all right, you know what? You know what, Steve? I I think I'm done here. Like, thank you for taking me out. We had a nice conversation, but this has gone way too far. He's like, no, no, no. I want it to... I want you to stay. I want it. I want it. I want it. I want it. I want you to stay. No going, no. That's not what I want. And Alex is like, are you okay? Are you having a mental breakdown right now? Like, why are you shouting, no, I want it, I want it, I want you to say, you must, I need it. He's like, no, 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 you can't go anywhere. Alex is like, I'm sorry, like, I I have my own autonomy. (laughs) Sorry, bro. (laughs) That's so tough. Like, I don't know what to say. Like, I I I don't understand. I'm going. Like, Alex stands up. Still has all these, like, red wine stains in her. She's like, I'm sorry, like, I'm gonna go. Goodbye. And he's like, no, I don't think you are. And he literally starts slamming his, like, fist on the table. And Kate turns around and starts laughing. She's like, can't hold down a date, Steve. Can't hold down a date. Just so you know, the greatest thing was me after all. That's what I've been saying. That's what I've been saying, Steve. Get wrecked, bro. Okay, I don't know if she said get wrecked, bro, but you understand the gist of what I'm trying to say, right? And Steve is so angry. He's like, you know what? You know what? And he grabs, uh, like, the candle. So they have, like, in some some restaurants, they have the fake candles. You know what I'm talking about, like, the fake, like, lighted candles. But some of them, like, some of the fancy ones, too, have, like, real candles. And he takes a real candle. He's like, I don't care anymore. And he just chucks the candle, right? And, And just, like, starts... He, like, kicks over, like, the plate on his table, and he chucks the candle, and he's, like, screaming. However, he didn't realize when he chucked the candle, what he actually did was he chucked the candle onto the drapes, the thin but very flammable drapes, and immediately they catch. But no one notices at first. They just see a little smoke because, like, you know, it doesn't explode in the flames. It's not dipped in gasoline or something, right? But sure enough, right, you know, eventually... You know, Alex is watching the whole thing with Steve and Kate go down. And that's when uh, Kate's Tinder date's like, hey, everybody, like, turn around, look, look, look. And all three of them turn around and they look at the uh, curtains, which have all completely caught on fire. And the fire is now quickly spreading. So at this point, right, they all turn around. They're like, oh, my God, oh, my God. So they all get up. They all walk away from it. And that's when, like, you know, Alex is like, we got to go find someone. So Alex runs, finds the manager. He's, like, standing around the front desk. He's like, there's a fire. There's a fire going on. So immediately, you know, 911 was was called, the whole restaurant was evacuated, and, like, Alex and Steve walk out, and Alex is like, I I think I should just go home, right? And Steve's like, 
wait, so you're not coming back to my place? And she's like, no, of course I'm not coming back to your place. She's like, okay, well, you have my number. If you change your mind tonight, like you're like, oh my God, that Steve guy was so great. I'm so sad that I was an idiot and decided not to go back to his place right away. I guess I'm going to be crawling back to him on my knees. <laughs> okay, Alex is like, you know what, Steve, that, that won't be happening, but I, I, thanks for looking out for me, bud. If that happens, thanks for looking out for me. I, I really appreciate it. He's like, oh, no problem, dude. Like, I got you. And so Alex very angrily walks away. And, you know, the next day comes around. Alex is checking the local news, and sure enough, is like there was an article about, like, the fire damage or whatever. But apparently they said that they had no idea what caused the fire. Police were investigating it, but the restaurant sustained some pretty bad internal damage. But it, like, the, it would be fixed up in, like, a month or something, which is detrimental for anyone in the restaurant business, by the way. I don't know if they went out of business or not. But anyways, Alex met up with one of her friends the next day. They went out for coffee. They sit down. And Alex is like to her friend, because her friend's like, anything new? And she's like, so you might think that you have a bad date story, but I truly have the worst date story. Click on the video on heard. screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. How's it going, everyone? I hope you're having a great day because today we have three stories of spoiled kids getting owned by the teacher. All of them are great, and I know you will enjoy them. So sit back, relax, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and let's get into the first story where we're going to call the subscriber Finn. By the way, if you want to submit stories, submit them to my Twitter account, at Connor Pugs. It's in the description. With that being said, let's just jump right into it. So anyways, anyways right, man, I can't speak. Anyways, Finn is a college student. And uh, he's currently in a college uh, math class. And in this college math class, there's a kid who's kind of just like known as a kid who's pretty spoiled, like one of those kind of like entitled kids. And I don't mean someone who necessarily, I don't know, has like really rich parents or something like that, or, you know, has more things provided for them so that they're like a little bit inconsiderate, they're a little bit arrogant, because they're definitely people that, you know, just don't know any better. Like they'll they'll do some, they'll just kind of assume certain things are like the normal for other people, but it's not. And I, I don't really consider those people like spoiled brats or whatever. Th that's just like, I, I don't know. That's uh, obviously, it's not the greatest thing. It's better to be aware of your surroundings. But when I mean spoiled kid, I mean like comes in, flexes his double wrists when iced out Rolexes, like drops his Amex black card on the table. It's like, oh yeah, I'm self-made when he literally has never worked a job in his life. But anyways, so this kid, we're just going to call him the spoiled kid. And there was a pretty big test in the math class. And there was basically two major tests for this college semester. And the grade was basically 50% the first test, 50% the second test. It was a brutal way to grade the class. But it was also somewhat easy in a sense because if you just studied for the first test or you just, if you just studied really well for these two assignments, you got 100 in the course. You didn't have to show up any of the days at all except the days of the test if you really wanted to, but it's really hard if you're struggling the subject. Anyways, so about halfway through the semester, it is the first test. It's the first assessment. And uh, Finn is sitting in this college class. He's been studying for weeks at this point, and he's really nervous. I mean, I could totally understand where he's coming from. I would be personally terrified myself. And so in walks the spoiled kid, and the spoiled kid just kind of has this attitude to him. This kind of has this kind of like... I don't know. He's just like super confident, super just full of himself. And you could, you could kind of tell, right? So the spoiled kid sits right in front of uh, Finn. And so the teacher passes around the test. Is like, all right, you guys have two hours to finish this. Um, you, are, you may finish early. In fact, I, I expect almost all of you to finish this before the two hours. I gave about one hour worth of material. So, you know, if, if it takes you, it should not take you more than two hours. And uh, everyone may begin. And sure enough, everyone whips out, like starts writing down. Finn is kind of nervous because he's feeling okay about the test. But I don't know if you guys have taken a math test before and you're going through it and you're like, yeah, I think I got the right answer. The worst thing is when you think you got the right answer, you don't know you got the right answer. Like you get an answer and it's like not a super clean number, comes out as a bunch of decimal points and you're like, okay, that doesn't seem good. But who knows? But the thing was, Finn looked in front of him and the spoiled kid was sitting there. And the spoiled kid was sitting there and, you know, he had his backpack. And his backpack 
he, the spoiled kid began to reach into his backpack. Finn, being easily distracted, started paying attention to the spoiled kid. And he, watch, and he looks as the spoiled kid reaches into the backpack and kind of just assumes that, oh, okay, whatever, right? The spoiled kid is just reaching in for a pencil, maybe an eraser, maybe a piece of scratch paper, which would have been a little sus, but whatever. But instead, the spoiled kid reaches into his backpack and grabs an iPad. Not his phone, not like something small, a whole on iPad, and not an iPad mini, a full iPad, right? And he takes out the iPad and he puts it on his lap. To be fair, it was a somewhat discreet position. It was not super obvious that there was an iPad on his, on his lap. But the spoiled kid opens up the iPad and literally goes to Safari, the Google search engine on iPads, and he opens it up. And he starts typing, he goes to like, like he starts typing in the questions into Google and just getting the answers. Like sometimes he has to like literally search through message boards like Reddit or I don't know. Okay, they wouldn't use Stack Overflow, it's a math class. But they, he'd be searching through stuff like, I don't know, Reddit, Wolfram Alpha, all these sites or whatever. And he was like finding the answers every single time. And at this point, right, you know, uh, Finn was looking at him. He's like, this kid's crazy. Dude's gonna get caught. There's not a chance that dude doesn't get caught. Like, are you kidding me? You, you can't be, like, you, you cannot be serious here. And sure enough, right, you know, the spoiled kid is, uh, you know, he's, you know, just going along, like, da, 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 just going through writing down his answers. And Finn is kind of distracted now, is watching as the math teacher, who is at the front of the class, just kind of like grading stuff, gets up to just casually walk around. Because I don't know about you, but when I have tests, sometimes the teacher just decides to stroll around. Sometimes the teacher wants to see, you know, what other people are doing and how they're doing and just making sure that they're not blatantly cheating like the spoiled kid is here. So Finn like quickly puts his eyes back on his own paper because he doesn't want to be accused of like looking at the spoiled kid's work or anything. But he, he just, he can't concentrate right now because he knows for a fact that the spoiled kid is about to be outed is a big old cheater, right? And so sure enough, you know, the, the teacher walks around and he, the thing is, the teacher is kind of going, doing a snake pattern throughout the desks. So instead of going for, like, instead of approaching the spoiled kid front on, he approaches, approaches the spoiled kid from the back, which maybe if the teacher started one row earlier and he would have ended up approaching the spoiled kid from the front, the spoiled kid would have noticed that someone was approaching him and he would have either turned off the iPad or at least stopped using it actively. But unfortunately for the spoiled kid, you know, the teacher was approaching from behind. And as the teacher got closer and closer, the teacher ended up passing by Finn and stopping right next to Finn's desk. Not, of course, to like look at what Finn was doing, but to observe the spoiled kid who was sitting one desk ahead of Finn. The spoiled kid was very clearly going on his iPad, typing on it, scrolling through to find answers, and then writing on like his test. And the teacher is like, under his breath, he's like, Spoiled kid, what are you doing? Obviously says the actual name of the spoiled kid, but it's like, spoiled kid, it, are, are you cheating? And the spoiled kid's like, looks up, turns around, shuts off the iPad, and is like, uh, no, I'm not cheating. And, you know, the teacher's like, well, what, what, what were you doing with that iPad? And the spoiled kid's like, um, well, I just had it out. And, you know, the teacher's like, I'm, I'm sorry, but... Even if you just have your phone, like I made it very clear in the beginning of class, you cannot have any sort of device out. Like, even if you weren't cheating, we would have no way to know if you were or weren't, and we just have to assume you are. The spoiled kid's like, well, I I'm just going to finish this test. Like, I mean, you can take this iPad if you want. It was just lying around. And the thing was, like, Finn knew that the teacher was watching the spoiled kid cheating on the iPad actively. It's not like, I don't know, the spoiled kid forgot to put the iPad away and it just happened to be out. It was on and he was using it. And then he just like turns it off as soon as the teacher asks him what he's doing. And the teacher's like, no, I can't do that. Like, I need to take your test now. I'm sorry, I have to mark it as a zero. Which, first of all, is devastating. That is absolutely devastating. Because, you know, 50% of your grade is a zero? You cannot pass that class. I don't care if you get 100% on your other tests. I don't care if you get 100% and 10% with extra credit. You are not passing that class. So at this point, the spoiled kid, who definitely doesn't want to like have to redo the class again, is like, uh, I don't think so. I'm going to finish this test, and like I'm going to hand it to you, and you're going to grade it. 
And the teacher is like, bro, in his head, he's like, you're talking back to me. And Finn is starting to be like, oh my God, like I'm going to need two whole, I'm going to need the whole two hours to finish this test because I can't pay attention for the life of me. And the teacher's like, are you talking back to me? And at this whole time in the beginning, the teacher and the spoiled kid were kind of whisper fighting back and forth. But now the teacher full on said in his full voice, are you talking back to me? And like the whole class turns and looks, right? The whole test has been derailed. And the spoiled kid's like, you know, if I were you, I would be careful, Mr. Teacher, because here's the thing. Here's the thing you got to know. You know, the teachers who cross me and cross me bad, you know, my dad knows a person or two on the board. They know a person or two, right? And the thing is, if I give my dad a word that you, sir, are being, you know, mischievous, <laughs> okay, I don't think he said mischievous, though. I don't think that's the word choice. But if you, sir, are messing with me, bro, then I don't know. Maybe you're going to have to find a new job. I mean, I heard McDonald's is hiring, bro. At this point, the teacher and the spoiled kid, it's like a 1v1 face-off right now. They're both looking at each other. They both very much dislike each other at this point, And they're kind of just having a bit of a stare-off. And at this point, that you, I, Finn could basically, he, if Finn had a butter knife on him, he could cut the tension in the room right in half. And the teacher looks at him and takes one step closer to the spoiled kid. Because the one thing the spoiled kid didn't know was that this teacher was not any old teacher. This teacher has been at the school for so many years. This teacher is doesn't just have tenure. He has like tenure plus, bro. He has like the next version of tenure. This guy is entrenched in the establishment of this school. This guy is like whatever connections his dad has or whatever kind of donor this dad has, it will not have any impact. And the teacher goes up to him, if a spoiled kid, and says, do it. Call your dad and tell him to fire me. Do it. I dare you. At this point, the spoiled kid's face went from, like, a smug smile to complete shock and horror. Because, like, he was convinced that this would be enough for, the, for you know, the, the teacher to fold. Apparently, this has worked every other time the spoiled kid has done it. So the spoiled kid was like, oh my, well, like, he's, he's not taking it? Sitting down? What? Real quick comment, spoiled, if you made it this far into the video. I'm going to try and heart as many comments as I can. And if you want to support the channel, all you got to do is continue watching videos after this one. You can do them by looking in the recommended section for other videos, or you can go to my channel page, which has playlists. I have playlists for spoil kids, high school stories, uh, Karen videos, whatever you want. It's there. And uh, by the way, if you like watching these videos on the go, I have a Spotify. It is first link in the description. It's called, or just look up Connor Pugs on Spotify. And please, if you do listen on there, rate it five stars and follow.